Live on the Woodward Sports Network, 99.1 and 93.5 The Roar. The Woodward Sports app and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Let's talk some sports. It's Big D Energy. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Big D Energy right here on the Woodward Sports Network. My name is Neil Rule. That guy over there, T. Foss, Detroit sports media icon, Terry Foster. We got Sam Flannel, Spencer Raxter. D-Mac is a winding down golf season. He's at the uh, at a golf outing today, so no D-Mac. I know he's out and about. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that a little bit later on, on what he's got going. He's flying in helicopters and ish like that, dude. <laughs> it's, it's all crazy. T-Foss. In studio Good for the day. first time here with yes. Big D Energy. Very Good to excited. have you. Well, actually, it's not my first time. But well, it, under the, the rebranding. Okay. Th- there you go. I, th- I think that's a better way to put it. Tap in on the YouTube chat thread on our YouTube channel as well. Subscribe. You can jump in. Guide some of the conversation like Detroit Dabber 313. Yo, what up, doe people? What up, doe Detroit Dabber? And uh, everybody else, Tammy Chin, you know, the usual suspects. We're all uh, we're all rolling out here today. NFL cuts have gone down. T-Foss hard knocks yesterday. We'll get to all of it. Okay, I can't, can't wait. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> Big backup quarterback news that is gripping the city of why, Detroit. Why are you so down on the backup quarterback story? I don't get it. That's what we do, man. It's it's we want to know who's going to be the backup because you know Jared Goff's going to get injured. You want to know who's going to be uh, playing these four or five games when he's not playing. But my thing, like, I just I don't understand it, man. Like everybody is losing their mind about the black up the the backup quarterback and Blau and you know everything that's going that's going on with it. Well, you Go- know why? No, I don't know why. Okay, first of all, Detroit loves the backup quarterback. And secondly, you have that conglomerate of people saying, I told you, should have drafted Malik Willis yeah. when you had the shot. You didn't do it. Spencer, the, come back to bite you. The, the floor is yours, Spencer. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm just saying, it's, we could have Malik Willis on a rookie contract, not have to pay that extra money. First of all, pay $1.75 million to cut Tim Boyle and then bring in another guy, pay him a million dollars or $2 million. You know, he could have had Malik Willis. He looks like a pretty good backup in Tennessee. That's all I'm saying. Now, I, I do want to address this, by the way. And, and everybody's been talking about it. And they're like, well, this whole backup quarterback situation. And I can't believe David Blau got cut. And, and guys, it's really very easy. Would you rather have Nate Sudfeld and a million dollars in cap space? Or would you rather have David Blau and Tim Boyle? There you go with that money. This is chump change, man. Uh, but... None of them can play, so whatever is cheapest, <laughs> that's the way I go. But see, so so you're you're on board with me then. I'm on board with you reluctantly. Absolutely, I don't like Terry. doing this, but these dudes can't play. None I, of them. I don't disagree. And if they're in the game, you're screwed. So why 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 the energy? Why why does everyone use up all their energy debating about this? Because Malik Willis is not in town. That's why. Some you know some people say you know awful pick if you would have picked him. Others are like hey see there now it's gonna come and bite you in the butt. This is what happens with the Lions. The other factor is this is the Detroit Lions. Whatever decision they make in the past always bit them in the ass. And some folks think it's gonna happen again with Malik Willis. Now I'm not one of them. And here's, you know, do you rather have Josh Pascal or Malik Willis? That's what it comes down to. So, um, I don't want Malik Willis because I don't want to uh, waste a draft pick on a guy who's going to be a backup quarterback. I'd rather wait next year, get my rookie who I project to be a starter and to start from there. Right, and when you boil it all down... You and I are in lockstep about it. I don't. I don't care about it. I don't. I, I don't get it. But it's all everybody wants to talk about. It's the social media. It's it's all of it, man. Like people are worked up for real about this. And you know, we welcome your thoughts as well. FJ nineteen sixty seven Sam Flannel wants to talk about Tom Kennedy being the next Antonio Brown, Randy Moss. 
Of course not, I don't. He's going to be on the practice squad. Not going to see any action for any team this year, and I'm going to say I told you so again. Speaking of Tom Kennedy, there's been a lot of pivoting going on. A lot of pivoting amongst the Tom Kennedy stands being like, how, it's not a big deal that you predicted that he wouldn't be on the roster. Everybody knew that. Stop it. Everybody was, so many people were saying, Tom Kennedy should be on the roster. Jamison Williams is on Pup. There's room for him. You guys were all saying it. Now you're trying to backpedal. Don't don't think I didn't get those receipts. Stop it. All right, you know what? I'm not going to backpedal. I like Tom Kennedy, damn it. Of course. <laughs> Kennedy. I, I wanted him on the roster. Still do. Why? Kennedy. Why? He doesn't, he's not even going to play. That's the problem. <laughs> even Kennedy. if he makes the roster, he offers nothing on special teams. The All only right, way that guys. he would go down is if... if Sam Flannel. He's cut. It's over. It, it, it's over. Yeah, I you can't would, talk about Tom Kennedy. Hey. We're I'm talking about that about privately that. in the back hallways. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. He's not worth, but I like him, but he's not worth my breath. But, okay. How about that? Fair enough. Yeah. So, you know, it is, it's just one of those things where I don't understand, but for those of you uh, that haven't heard yet, Nate Sudfeld uh, has been picked up by the Detroit Lions after David Blau got cut late last night slash early this morning. I don't know the exact timing of when it all went down. But but we will you know we will discuss we'll discuss the cuts as well we do have we do have a list right like a master list yes. of of the cuts I, I guess we could get that out there and just take a look and when you boil it all down Terry I don't think there were a ton of surprises it was pretty much as anticipated and again T Foss and and this is a greater topic that that maybe we can get into a little bit later on in the show. And you know, and you know where I roll, Terry. You make fun of me for it, but when you follow the money, you tend to have a grip on what's about to happen more often than not. When you follow the money, is that, is that show, a fair show statement? Show me the money. Show me the money. Right. Follow the money that that tells you exactly what's going on. Remember this, guys. This year with this Lions team, this year they're paying eighteen and a half million dollars to Trey Flowers and Jamie Collins. Oof. Remember oh, that. Hey. Remember, I mean, what's that? Seven, eight percent of your salary cap. You're paying to Trey Flowers, guys. Everybody, turn it down a little bit. I know, I know that we're getting fired up, and and I, I and people have done a great job of it so far, Terry. Where I think the expectations have come down into that seven-ish, you know, that seven-ish win range or things yeah, like that. Yeah, I think that. people are coming down to earth. Uh, you know, you see the yelling, and you see Dan Campbell with his rah-rah routine. And that gets you fired up. But at some point, emotion doesn't play a, a huge factor in football games. Uh, it's about talent. It's about scheming. It's about schematics. And the bottom line is the Lions are not an 11 or 12 win football team. They might be a seven win football team. Maybe could win eight games, which by my calculations is still below 500. Right. So they're still... A mediocre football team trying to get good and they're trying to get good the from right a talent way. perspective right. and just as important from a financial perspective well, here we go with the finances again this, Terry this it's guy, part of it man you're killing me it's part of it killing me that's your ammunition in the NFL Terry your salary cap space is your ammunition that's how that's how you get players okay is it, it tell me where I'm wrong no you're right I just don't want to hear it. <laughs> How about that? Okay. <laughs> fair enough. No, no, no. <laughs> fair, fair enough, t you Shut up about the money. Uh, okay. I, I want to know what's happening on the field and blah, 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 blah. It's part of it, though, Terry. It's we agree it. it's part of it. And it's, it's part a major of it. part of it. Now, you should come in with a three-piece suit every day. <laughs> Guys, uh, we're, I don't want to talk about the Lions roster. Let's talk about the finances. <laughs> well, the <laughs> finances should, dictates the roster. Now, if you save this amount of money, the Lions are still going to be bad. Terry, because here's why. All right, let's let's get into it then, Terry. Let's do it. Here's here's why. Here's why I'm this way. Teddy KGB has, has said it best. Here's why, Terry. Because of like discussions on the morning show today. All right, where they were like they were talking about Amon Russ St. Brown, who is my that's my bell cow for the Lions organization okay. right now, and every time I bring him up, I got to give the disclaimer, Spencer mm -hmm. Raxter. Amon Russ St. Brown's entire rookie contract costs less money than Kenny Galladay will make this September, this month. 
Okay? Yes. You've and, said that. And I'm in agreement. I like that's when valuable. you say that. That's valuable. That's valuable. And then the conversation, to, and I don't know how they got onto it. I was kind of bouncing in and out of the show. They got onto the discussion about Devontae Smith. Like, who would you? who's going to be a better player? Who's a better player, Devontae Smith or, or Amon Ross? Oh, you know Brown. why they started on that. You know the morning show. They drink during the show. <laughs> so it's no right. telling what's coming out of their mouths. Right. So they got on that whole discussion about who would you rather have and stuff like that, and people were like, well, Devontae Smith's a little better. Like, that's not a discussion either. Amon Ross St. Brown's entire rookie contract is less than Devontae Smith makes this year. Therefore, if they're close, talent, it's Amon Ross St. Brown by a mile. Bingo. But you bring in Devontae Adams if you are just about to win a championship or compete for a championship. The Lions are not there yet. That. So, therefore, you have Amon Ross St. Brown. Right. But that's, that's how va- – he's the most valuable player, I think, on the Lions, when you look at it in the totality of everything, cost versus performance, it's a factor, Terry. It is. Aiden Hutchinson, if he if he is what Sam Flannel says he's going to be, he he's not as good of a value as Amon Ross St. Brown, but he'll be up there. Hey, I mean, especially I'm on sorry, that rookie deal. What does deal? Sam Flannel say about Aiden Hutchinson? So I can go the opposite uh, direction. Twelve and a half sacks, uh, NFL Rookie of the Year. Okay, I mean six sacks, and uh, he'll be released by the team <laughs> by week twelve. Man, yeah. Terry, Debbie Downer coming to Big D Energy. I don't know if I like it. Come on now. Okay, no, but but Aiden Hutchinson has that ability to be a tremendous value. <laughs> Panay Sewell will be a steal, an absolute steal. You see the recurring theme here, T. Foss. Cheap. Yeah. In the grand scheme of yeah, things, man, cheap. I'm going to teach you something else here. I'm going to put this in your little financial basket. <laughs> this is why I am not high on signing big-name free agents. Because fans always say, damn it, need a big-name free agent. Do you know what the big-name free agent does? He gets paid for what he did four or five years ago. Nine times out of ten, he doesn't provide that same service for your team. Because, A, he's getting paid. B, he's probably a little bit fatter. Uh, C, a little bit more injured than he was before, and he's a shell of what he used to be. And I, I, keep, I hate to keep bringing my man up, but Damian Woody, that's exactly what he was when he came here. Damian Woody came here, gained 200 pounds, got paid, and basically did nothing for the Lions. That's what a high price free agent, a oh, big name free agent does for you. Uh, no, and I get it, and I'm with you on so that. So put that in your basket next time you start You're, talking about We're money. in agreement again. I don't, I'm, I'm not huge on – everybody wanted the Lions to be like Spence in the Coliseum, by the way. Yeah, Mondays. Monday, Go ahead. Monday Night Football. Come join the heavyweights live from the Coliseum. Monday People Night want football. the Lions in free agency to be like Spence in the Coliseum yeah. and just throwing money around, throwing and that's money. not the play. Lamp Spence, chop Spence doesn't hand. have to do that. Yeah. Right, because the holes come to him, Facts. and he just he keep his money in his pockets, and they still give him. Uh, on the YouTube pleasure. chat, on the YouTube chat thread, I think this one's a little out of line here. Rich Diana says another Kennedy taken out. That's that's a little aggressive, right there. Ugh. That's too a little soon. aggressive. It'll never <laughs> not be. Soon, it'll right. never not be too soon. Right. for that. We don't need that kind of stuff, Rich Diana. We yeah. don't want it on the show. Tom Kennedy to the Dallas Cowboys confirmed. But it was yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> but, but we are. We're going to talk about the uh, Cheech. Rookie deals are cheap. Breaking news. Well, Cheech, but what, what, what do we have? What show do we have all off season? Everyone's like, go sign this guy. Go sign this guy. Go sign this guy. I think it is news to people. And I'm gonna, we're going to keep talking about it. We are. But, no, we, I do want to get into this backup quarterback situation, the hard knocks as well. we got to get into the fold about that. Um, I'm not going to trash it the way some other people have been trashing it, but we are at a disadvantage here. We'll discuss that when we talk about the hard knocks after Sam Flannel talks to you about haircuts. Come to Lady Jane's for an award-winning haircut experience and register for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win the car of your dreams from Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in any time. No appointment necessary. It's wicked awesome. The sports marketing agency would not be who we are without great community partners like Higuera Health and Carol Zaniga. It's an awesome opportunity to partner with your organization. Higuera Health is a, a comprehensive behavioral health 
organization. We serve children through older adults with mental health, substance use, and uh, developmental disabilities across Western Wayne counties and really excited to now be in Downriver communities as well. Give us a call at 734-458-4601. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> you don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers tan. With 26 locations in the Metro Detroit area and more coming, Chili Peppers Tanning is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. Join the Pepper Club for the best deals on unlimited tanning. Head to ChiliPeppersTanning.com. You just need a little Chili Peppers, man. <clears throat> Neil Roll here for OddsTrader.com, the number one site for all of your game day betting activity. They got play-by-play -play updates. They've got live scores. That's great. You need those, especially if you're one of the live betting people, because I think that's that's where you can find some angles, I think. But I digress. The best part about OddsTrader.com, all the prices at all the sports books are available for you to view at once. You're not opening an app on your phone, closing it out, opening another app, all that kind of stuff. You need to make moves. You're in the business community. Your time is valuable. You need to make moves. OddsTrader.com is the tool for you. Go to OddsTrader.com right now or download the app. OddsTrader.com. Find your best bet. Off and running, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Terry Foster here in the house. DMAC will be back tomorrow. We'll be squad deep uh, once again tomorrow. But the uh, the big news this morning slash late last night, David Blau cut by the Lions. The Lions went out and added Nate Sudfeld. And uh, this guy's been a journeyman in the league, spent a year with the Washington Redskins at the time. A couple years with the Philadelphia Eagles, spent last year with the 49ers, and now here. Uh, 25 NFL completions in 37 attempts, 68% completion percentage, one touchdown, one interception. So those are the uh, those are the career numbers. And look, my thing about it was you cut Blau and Boyle. You bring in Sudfeld, you save about a million bucks in totality. So I know that's pennies to Terry. Now you just bring in he, another he guy who can't rain. play. But but again, my take on it remains the same. If he's in the game, you're losing the game anyway. So we may as well lose the game cheaper. David Blau's played more than this guy in the league. Turnover machine, too. We know. Yeah, turnover machine. Turnover machine. Terry, I go to you. you only need him for like two plays or something like that. Right. To kneel down at the end of the game, perhaps. Um, I go to you with this, Terry. Help me understand this. I go to you for help. Yeah, I've known you for and a while. I'm, I'm here to help you. Yeah, I, I've, I've known you for a while. You're an icon in, in sports media here in this town. I, uh, I seek those out who have lived it before. And so I ask the question, explain to me this whole backup quarterback thing in this town. Help me understand why people have such a strong take on Nate Sudfeld. And, and to back that up, even to say... David Blau is better than Nate Sudfeld. These were these were real comments by real people. People he might that, be people people that are regular viewers and contributors to Woodward Sports Network. These are real comments, real thoughts of people. Why? Explain it to me, Terry. Help me. Okay, when I explain this to you, are you gonna quit bugging me about this? Yes. Okay. I feel like I should uh, put you on my knee and explain this to you, young lad. Can I have a glass of hot cocoa, too? Uh, I was going to give you some hot milk, warm milk. Warm milk. That's but even better. Here's the problem. This is why the backup is so important in the sound. Here in the city of Detroit, since I've been alive, you've had starting quarterbacks, Eric Kipple, Greg Landry, Jeff Comlo. Um, all these dudes were not very good. And so what happens is there always becomes a quarterback controversy with the fans. They said, man, this backup's got to be better than what they're putting out there now. So this has been going on for decades and decades and decades. Even Matthew Stafford, the greatest quarterback in Lions history under the Fords, the fans said it got to be something better because he can't win a playoff game. 
Uh, he turns the ball over in the, in the second half. He puts up fake numbers. There's got to be something better than him. Give him some competition. That's why we have this obsession with the backup quarterback because the starting quarterbacks in this town have been so bad. You always think it's got to be something better than, out there. Now, but now, there's not. Oh, there, there has been. I'm sure there has been. I'll tell you a quarterback who wanted to come here, and the Lions said no. Remember a guy named Randall Cunningham? Yes. He wanted to come to Detroit. Uh, a guy in the Lions organization talked to him and said, hey, we may have an opening there. Are you interested? He said yes. But the rest of the Lions were like, nah, nah. They, they didn't want to bring him in. Then he goes to Philadelphia, shows out, plays well. And he could have been a Detroit Lion. So that's why we're obsessed with the, the backup quarterback. Even if there's somebody that's good that wants to come here, the Lions are like, nah, we're not interested. <laughs> and I understand, even though I wouldn't have uh, signed him or I wouldn't have drafted I understand the Malik Willis stuff. Because there are people who are convinced this guy can play. And once again... And there are people that are convinced that he's trash. And it's, people's, it's polarizing, but right? But the people who are convinced he can play are in the back of their minds that here's another quarterback that could help the Lions, and the Lions said, nah, we're good. Under Matthew Stafford, the Lions chose not to have backup quarterbacks. They had guys who could barely walk and chew gum. Who's the greatest backup quarterback under Matthew Stafford? Sean Hill. Sean Hill? Probably. I or mean, John Kittner? John Kittner, man. Tell him more. You know, uh, or Dan Orlovsky? <laughs> yeah. Which one? Let's pick one. <laughs> so they chose because I, 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 what the prevailing wisdom was, we don't want a controversy with Matthew Stafford. He's our guy. Uh, we're going to make sure that he's our guy. But even under those circumstances, people were saying, okay, he can't win a playoff game, so why are you babying him like this? Let's get a great or a real good backup to challenge him. That's why we're obsessed with the backup quarterback. Yeah, I just I don't I don't get it. I'll never understand it. I never will. E, uh, Nine Drinks says, "What about a bowl of warm cream of wheat?" What about no Nine Drinks? And let's stop. Uh, let's stop with that. But Ethan cream Brown. Cream of wheat's pretty good though. What? Have you had cream of wheat? <laughs> Have you had cream no, no, of wheat? No, no, no. Don't dismiss no. it. It's good. That's some good stuff, man. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's, it's not. Sweet. It's almost like grits. It's warm. You put a little butter in there. Cream of wheat is good. Oh, hell no. Bro. <laughs> I guess we're going to fight on this one. This is Neil. <laughs> Neil will die on this hill, Terry. Okay. Nobody eats cream of wheat, T-Foss. No, nobody, nobody eats it, but it's good. Kids. If your kids are out there listening, kids. <laughs> Eat a bowl of cream of wheat. It's going to be delicious. It's going to help you with your schoolwork. It'll help you with your eyesight. <laughs> and for the old people like Neil, your bowel movements will be better. I know that's very important to you. Knock down a bowl of cream of wheat. See how your life changes. Don't give me that look like you got gas. T-Foss. By the way, Come if you on, have cream man. of wheat, you won't have gas. By the way, you if you can find a box of cream of wheat anywhere, do they still make it, number one? You know why you can't find it? Supply. Su supply. No. When you do find it, it's the same box from 1987 that's sitting up there, T-Foss. Do you like grits? Huh? Do you like grits? I, I mean, I don't seek them out. I, I'm, I'm indifferent okay. to them. Nobody eats grits, too, but they're good, too. What are you talking about? In the, whenever whenever I travel in the South, man, it, it the grits are all over the place. You know what's not all over the place anywhere in the world? Cream, Cream of wheat. wheat. It's no not because it's sold out. No, that, that is definitely <laughs> not the case. Uh, on our YouTube chat thread, Ethan Brown says, Neil, people like to fix broken things, and the backup quarterback spot was broken. It's broken. That's what I don't get. I, I understand your premise, Ethan. Like you, you are right. People like to fix broken things, but are you gonna are you gonna fix that through? cuts through training camp cuts in the nfl are you going to fix that in a league where quarterbacks make 50 million dollars so I therefore got, hey, you know what let me raise my hand let me interrupt you i got a novel concept how about getting a, a backup quarterback who can actually play who where 
Who's got a backup quarterback well, that can play? Name one. Well, people. Well, off the top Tennessee's of your head, Sam Flannel, give me one. Mike uh, White, Chad Henney, maybe, but that's. Uh, what what about Henney. San Francisco? Jimmy oh. G. That's oh, Jimmy a pretty G. good backup quarterback. About Tyler Huntley from the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, he's pretty good, but still, he's not a franchise quarterback. He's not even a starting quarterback in this league. There are none. There, there, there are like you know 15 quarterbacks quarterback? in this league what that can play. Nick Foles? He was a backup quarterback. Oh, he and got and I, knew, I was waiting for that one, and I was waiting for it in here. There's one ever. Big Dick Nick. There's actually two ever, but that does, but it doesn't matter. It's Jeff Hostetler in 1990 with the Giants. What but about still, Tom Brady? Tom Brady, okay. backup quarterback. But look, he turned look how into, that worked out. Yeah. C- come on, he 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 turned into the most accomplished quarterback of all time. Come yeah. on now, that's and that's, Paul Thomas says it well. Jimmy G's a starter. He he is. A that's starter. true. He is a starter. I mean, he's been a starter. What about Sam Darnold. God. What about Sam Darnold? <laughs> I was so high on Sam Darnold coming out of college, and I died on that hill for so long. But seeing how he imploded after starting the year pretty good last year, I'm out out on Sam Darnold completely, and it hurts. Gardner and people people talking about Gardner Minshew. If he were good, he would be a starter. Gardner Minshew is another one of those cult hero media yeah, creations. I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know that he wears jorts, right? And I know he's got a funny mustache and stuff. I get that. <laughs> and it's fun. I like that kind of stuff, too. I know Spence likes jorts. Oh, yeah. Like, I get, I get why people like him. He can't play. If he could, he'd be somewhere playing. I tell you what, he'd be the best backup quarterback here in Detroit. That's a fact. Bam. Dispute it. <laughs> Dispute it. <laughs> Sam wrong. I dare you. <laughs> Look, guys, I just I don't get it. I get what you're saying. I get the principle of what you're talking about. Ethan Brown, our YouTube chat thread, made a good point too. I understand it. I just can't get past the fact that it doesn't matter if it's Nate Sudfeld or if it's David Blau. If either one of these guys are in the game, you're losing. That's right. And I'm standing here going, all right, guys. Season's over, so you know where I go next. Okay, the, the second See, you can't go to the missing playoffs. The point. You're missing the point. People don't care about David Blau. They don't care about uh, Sudfield. They, in fact, they wish they were somewhere else. The issue is if Jared Goff goes down, this fan base doesn't want to see this team completely disintegrate. And that's what's going to happen. What did I nickname Blau and uh, – my, my man, uh, Blunder, the killer bee. <laughs> because if they play, the Lions are dead. <laughs> so, in the National Football League, your starting quarterback is going to go out. Like 50% of them are going to miss games. Because this league is violent, it's foul, and you knock quarterbacks out. So, there's a segment of this fan base who actually think the Lions are good. They think they're going to have a good season this year. They think they're going to be playoff contenders. Now, they're a little bit whacked, but let's give them their due. Let's try to respect them. Their thinking is this. If Jared, when Jared Goff goes down, then it's all going to disintegrate. That's why the backup quarterback is so important. But it is so, going to disintegrate. Because they don't have a backup. Nobody does. Tennessee has one. Yeah, they do. <laughs> San Francisco has one. Your britches are altered, aren't they? Oh. You can't wait. And you know what? Even though he doesn't play, perhaps Green Bay has one. No. And Jordan Love. No. Maybe. I'm a little shaky on that one. <laughs> <laughs> a Prag Patel. Careful there, Terry. Folks don't like addressing the backup quarterback situation around here. Nate Train says the goal is to get through a game and have a chance. You don't. You, unless, unless your roster is so complete. And, you know, that's, that's where I go to about the, you know, the, the Nick Foles. That was a Super Bowl winning team, man. Around him, yeah. Now, he balled out in that Super Bowl, no doubt. That was a great Super Bowl, and he, he played. Did. He was incredible, no question. Okay, but if David Blau was in a situation where they've done the same thing. Hell, no, 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 no. no That's no, the no. point. Absolutely not. 
If I was in a situation looking for a new energy drink, Cintron would be the play for me. It is the official energy drink of the Red Wings. You can pre-order their limited edition Red Wings themed six pack at CintronWorld.com slash Red Wings. You can try all the flavors, the cranberry, the classic, the sugar-free. All of it is in one pack. And don't forget, available at your local Kroger store as well. Next time you're grocery shopping, if you're in the energy drink world, pick a couple of cans up. Give it a spin. It'll be pretty quick to become your go-to energy drink. The new energy drink for the active lifestyle. Get energized with Cintron, and let's go Red Wings. New to the game or a season better? OddsTrader.com has everything you need to make the right bet ahead of kickoff. Begin your handicapping journey with OddsTrader. Improve your edge by finding the best price on every game from sportsbooks in your backyard. Take advantage of the numerous sign-up bonus offers to pad your bankroll. Dive into key game statistics, player performance, and even account for the projected game day weather. Best of all, you can use the Odds Trader Bet Tracker to keep a log of your action. Welcome to Odds Trader, and best of luck. We aren't quite sure if they consume more beer or sports. Either way, the heavyweights are here. Live on Woodward Sports, daily 5 to 7 p.m. Hey, this is Mr. Kearney, Chief Academic Officer of Academy of War. I want to welcome you to the brand new field house. The state of the art facility has a regulation basketball court, volleyball court, soccer field. It can be used for 707 football, our K-8 academic features, AM, PM, Lashkey, small classroom sizes, Learning Street, Futuristic Media Center, free breakfast and lunch, Holton Mifflin curriculum, academic games, K-8 athletics and more. Enroll today at academywarn.net. Neil Rule here for the Monroe Street Midway, brought to you by Bedrock Detroit. All summer long, the Monroe Street Midway is open in downtown Detroit. They got basketball, roller skating, mini golf, art, live music, food trucks, and more. A fun, safe environment for everybody, ages 1 to 100. If you're hanging out downtown, like say, hey, you got tickets to the Tigers game, but you don't really want to go in there because you know they're going to get crushed and be down 9 nothing. A lot like they were last night, the Monroe Street Midway can rescue you from having to go to the Tiger game and you can have a good time. Go to deckedoutdetroit.com for more information. It's Monroe Street Midway, brought to you by Bedrock Detroit. Off and running, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Teeth Boss, Terry Foster, permanent part of the show. You know what, your read jogged my mind for a minute. There's something I want to see now. I want to see a race between Spence and Easy going down the giant slide on Bell Isle. There, I... <laughs> Spencer Raxter, Sam Flannel here as well. Spence, what about that? If you and Easy were to go down the giant slide, I think that there's a possibility one of you could go back in time. Like, you know, I mean... Like, <laughs> no, no. No, no. You see people flying all over the place? That's not going to happen with them because they got big bucket asses. Yes. Right. So they're going to stick on the slide. They but won't think, be doing all this but stuff. But think of the inertia, the force that they would go down the slide with. Oh, they might go down like 250 miles an right, hour. That's what I'm saying. But they're not going to be bouncing up and down up in the, in the air. Spence, if you went down the giant slide, what year would you choose to go back in time to? Because there's no doubt you guys would hit 88.7 miles per hour. <sighs> that's true. Um, man, I mean... you go back to draft day. I would go back to draft and day. And get Malik Willis I'd for the line. Sure, make sure Malik Willis happens. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That's a good question. Maybe 2015. <laughs> go back there and be like, hey, Mark. Alabama's not going to be fun. <laughs> so it's not going to work out, buddy. I think he knew going yeah, in. Yeah. I, I think deep down in his soul, he knew. Uh, in our YouTube chat, remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel for Woodward Sports. You can jump in. Becky Jane Blackwell. It's all watered under the bridge now. You got Nate Sudfeld. Get over it. Thank you, it's Becky. Thank you. It's Malcolm Rodriguez's aunt. I appreciate it. Because that's, that's what it is. You, you put it perfectly. This I'd is what have it Rodrigo is. Rodrigo as quarterback than He pl he, he played it. High school quarterback. High school right. quarterback. Maybe a little wildcat action? What do you think? I'm so for I'm it. Down. More more Malcolm content just yeah. it works for me. It was good to see Rodrigo too out at the uh the oh, Mark yeah. Wahlberg golf thing at the Detroit Golf Club. He yeah. just rolled up, was yeah. walking around, hanging out. Missed him by like 2 minutes. Yeah, it was uh it was pretty cool. But um yeah, uh, Hard Knocks last night. The it's the second to last one. What's that called? The penultimate 
episode. Sure. Is that what it is? I'm not a wordsmith. You, you, you are. No, you have the fancy words for stuff, so whatever you okay. call it. Uh, yeah, so Hard Knocks <laughs> last night. What do we all think? Um, as far as I went with it, here's what I've learned. Because I do like Hard Knocks. It's one of my favorite shows out there. Uh, Dr. Dirty D YouTube chat thread. That Zeke shirt is sick, Neil. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Isaiah's my guy. We got to get him on the show, T. Foss. Can we get Grant Hill on the show? That Grant Hill is not my guy. He tapped out. So you don't like him? He tapped out. So if I get him on the show, you're, you're out of here. No, I mean, I'll be a professional, and I'll do the interview. Right. But the fact remains, he tapped out. But I'm glad he did, because that delivered a championship. Much to uh, Sam Flannel's chagrin. One of the best trades in the history of the NBA. <laughs> Why would ben I be- Wallace for Grand Hill. Hey, Suck on that, Sam Ben Flannel. Wallace was a very valuable member of that team. Just Suck not on a that. Hall of one of, one, of the, one of the best trades in the history of the NBA. It got the Pistons a championship. Why, sign why in, in the world would I be mad at that? I'm, I'm doing Detroit sports. Why would I be mad about the Pistons getting a championship? No, I'm not that petty. All right, not we're, that not, petty. we're not going that way, though. All right, we're not going that way. But speaking of Detroit, as I've told you guys before, Hard Knocks one of my favorite shows on television. I don't like it when it's my team, the team that I root for, because we live in this, right? We know everything that's going on. The second that it happens, that's just the way it is now. I, it was, there was no drama, I thought, last night. There was no suspense because we knew. We, we knew who was getting cut. We knew how things were going to play out. To whereas when I watch it and it's the Raiders or the Bengals or the Cowboys, I, I'm not immersed in their world. I kind of get my updates from Hard Knocks with what's going on with it. it that, I think yesterday was an example, T. Foss, of it being a drawback when it's your team. Agree I or disagree? Will disagree because even though you know a guy was cut, you don't actually see a guy say, "Hey, coach wants your playbook." You know what's happening, so you actually get to see it. Um, if you are a fan of the Detroit Lions. Here's what you get of the snippets you get of the line. Sometimes you may go to the training camp, you read the news of the free press, you go to Ford Field, you watch on TV. That's not putting you behind the curtain. Behind the curtain is so interesting. Whether you know what's already happened or not, it's, it's interesting to see a guy going, oh, damn, not the playbook, or... The coach feeling real bad, like, uh, I know, we didn't know, even you, get any of that yesterday, man. You, I was bummed. Getting We're getting week. it next week, though. You're getting it next week. But I like being behind the curtain. It's fun. A lot of things happen that you don't know about. I've been behind the curtain, and I'm going to guess I've only seen about 25 30% of the stuff that happens because I'm behind the curtain. But I'm not really, really behind the curtain. But this puts you... And, you know, on the inside, Neil, you should appreciate it. Even if you know what's going to happen, the movie is interesting. So you should enjoy it. No, and, and I do. Like, I do. It is. It's my favorite, it's my favorite show. You it's just, just said you didn't. It's a, no, it's a, I'm saying it's a little bit of a buzzkill when you're immersed in it. You know what I'm saying? Because we do. It, it, we know everything that happens the second it happens with our team because that's what we consume. You know what I'm saying? You knew, like the Khalil Pimpleton story, you already knew he was cut. So you're like... Uh, and I'm and look, guys. Apparently, I'm one of the few people in the media that understands this. Like, this is a television show, like a nationwide television show. It's Are not you a TV show. My media brothers and sisters. I am a little bit, yeah. Oh, gee. For like, that's well, not everybody, nice. everybody that's <laughs> crapping all over Hard Knocks, dude. Like, this is a nationwide television show. It's not for Detroit specifically. Bam. It's sure. not. They're, they're, they're trying to create, and you just gave it support, Terry. The storylines and the drama and stuff like that, that is drama. Do you think, you think an NFL fan in Lincoln, Nebraska, who is a, a newly minted NFL fan because he watched Nebraska play last weekend and said, F this, I'm out. Mm-hmm. I got to pick an NFL team to root for. Do you think an NFL t- a fan in Lincoln, Nebraska knows who Khalil Pimpleton is? No, no, but do we really need five minutes on Khalil Pimpleton juggling again? Couple, that, that's what that was one of the negatives that to that, that to that was, hard yeah. knocks for me. Do they we really need that? Pleasant. Do we really need that? Come on, Neil. We do not need five minutes of Khalil Pimpleton juggling and, and with that professional juggler. We haven't even seen Jamison Williams, Charles Harris, really any of Frank Ragnow or Decker. There's so many players that we haven't seen anything of. DJ Chark, another one, but Khalil Pimpleton gets 
storylines in every single show and i understand the last one does he really need to juggle in this episode i don't think so that was one of the downsides of last I night's episode that's a mistake but let me educate you on something First of all, Frank Ragnow is boring as hell. <laughs> uh, we saw him fishing in the Detroit River, wherever the hell he was. That's enough. <laughs> we don't need to see him saying, oh, hi, what's up, guys? And, and Terry, you bring up a great point, too. Because, But boring, you're not going to put boring people on the camera. For sure. Khalil you know, Pimpleton juggling was boring to me. I mean, come on. We all know that he was one of the first cuts. He had no chance of making the roster. I, I didn't need that. All right. You, you going to rip on my media brothers and sisters? Yes, I am. Then damn it, so am I. When I hear them talk, here's what I... They, they come up with the most boring shit. You know, I want to see uh, Jared Goff, uh, you know, look at the game plan. Nobody wants to Nobody see that. Nobody wants that, man. Right. No. It's got to be entertainment. That's what, uh, you know, I like Dan Campbell, but they're showing him too much. You know why? Because he's damn entertaining. Uh, Deuce Staley is entertaining. He says, well, I want to see some of the other assistant coaches who are not as flamboyant. Why? <laughs> so the whole nation can fall asleep? So the whole nation can say, hey, who was that team on Hard Knocks? I forgot because I fell asleep after the second episode. <laughs> no. You want entertainment. You want entertaining people. You want people who are going to stimulate you, not make you go to sleep. Jeremy Anderson says Jared Goff dropped an F-bomb. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. He said, fuck the coaches. <laughs> <laughs> and Jared Goff probably runs from the cameras because this is the idiot that said that the son – uh, rose out of the west or something. Yeah, and he, yeah. he did he, say well, that. He didn't know if it rose out of the west, the east, or whatever. That was pretty stupid. Yeah. Uh, so he's probably gun shy now. <laughs> DNC ENT says, you don't have to put them on the camera, but at least an intro or a backstory. Hell, JMO rehabbing would have been better than the than the pimp segment. See, I, I, what is there to the JMO thing? He's the first round pick. Right. He got injured at Alabama. That's a story. Okay. Line. Him cool. coming back. There he is. He's I, rehabbing. All hey, right. I guess and next. He carries the football around. So what? I guess I'm more interested in high end players than guys like Khalil Pimpleton juggling. Maybe if he f could focus more on catching the ball instead of juggling three things, maybe he'd be on the team. That's Ooh. all I'm saying. He a hard knocks opened it up. It it lobbed it up like Chris yeah, maybe Paul. Maybe Pimpleton would still be on the team if he didn't juggle the football. Well, that that's is that is true. Yeah, no, but it, it but it is though. I mean, what what? See, like that's what everybody keeps saying. They're like, "Well, give me the JMO story." What's the story? There he is. He's exercising his knee. Yep. And haven't we seen that on Hard Knocks time after time after time? If you rehabilitate one knee, they're all the same. You know what I'd rather see? I'd rather see Jalen Rose trying to hit a golf ball. Than, uh, <laughs> than my man rehabbing his knee. That was bad. Wow. That's the funny thing about golf. World-class athletes, man, yeah. when they first start, it's humbling, dude. <laughs> I feel like if you're as rich as Jalen Rose is, like he, how has he not been on the golf course a couple times? Like You're that rich? You're hanging out with those rich guys? We have the Jalen Rose Academy golf outing every year. Yeah. But he never plays in it. And I can see why. Thing. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised how unathletic athletes are. That, that is in, true. In other sports. Yeah. For instance, ben, and, uh, and everybody except Sam Flannel is going to agree with this. Ben Wallace was a hell of a defender in the NFL, right? In the NH NBA, right? Yes. He was athletic. He could swoop out of nowhere and swatch his shot. He was a great defender and rebounder. I played softball. In fact, I played catch with Ben Wallace. And I'm like, damn, this dude could barely throw a softball. <laughs> what the hell happened to him? Mm -hmm. But if we got on the basketball court, he'd kill me. More ammo for Sam Flannel's argument, I, I, guess, I guess you could say. But, yeah, on, on the golf course, Jalen Rose needs a guardian. Yeah, that's for sure. And, you know, there's only one place, if you need a guardian, that you can go. And that's Guardian Alarm. Because summertime is here, and that means spending more time outside. Let Guardian Alarm give you peace of mind. Whether you're out enjoying the sunshine, all you got to do is call 1-800-STAY-OUT. That's 1-800-STAY-OUT. One more time. How many days of flannel? 125. 125 days of flannel protection. So all you got to do is call 1-800-STAY-OUT and let them know Woodward Sports sent you. This is Big D Energy. We will be right back. 
Hi, my diamonds, it's Crystal with an X. You wanna get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. Game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. It's a great day to get some sense around in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Sense around, here we go. Gotta grab the cranberry. Oh, wait, it's two for four. Gotta double up with the classic as well. Sense around, world, baby. Centron, available at select Kroger's, and if you want to know how, go to at CentronWorld.com. You get dope like me. You know what? Why wait? Ah, great taste, guaranteed. Get a free Woodward Sports t-shirt. That's right, a free Woodward Sports t-shirt all month long at Big Frog in Novi. Just stop in, tell them we sent you, and they will print you one on the spot. So go to Big Frog Novi today and get your free t-shirt or visit them online at bigfrog.com slash novi. That is bigfrog.com slash novi. Back at it, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Terry Foster, Darren McCarty out today. The gang will be back in effect. Tomorrow, the chair. you'll be in Tomorrow, the chair. Right. I love that chair. That's a nice chair. The, no, the you team. know what that is? That's the Tom Masway. What's the, the thing when your booty itches? What's that called? <laughs> Swap ball? No, it's Swap uh, ball? Uh, they got mads, the little pads. Oh, the little pad hemorrhoids? The mads. Huh? Hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids. The little, <laughs> that's the Tom Masway hemorrhoid pad right there. <laughs> I don't have hemorrhoids, but it's comfortable. It's a comfortable chair, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Since I've muck, mucked up the show, Flannel, I'm going to say something. <laughs> and I, did I see you getting married? He yes. Was, yes, I okay. am. Okay, I'm going to say something, and your wife's going to hate me that I told you this. But do you know what they have? What? Flannel tuxedos. <laughs> oh, boy. Man, you got to get one, bro. That, I'm going to the wedding. I'm not I might, lying. I might have to rent a flannel tuxedo <laughs> for the wedding. That would be awesome. Oh, and yeah. they're not all black and white. I mean, you can get the red and the black and the red and the black and the white. They got flannel tuxedos, bro. You need to rock <gasps> one. Ooh, that might. I'm sorry, Neil. And what were you saying? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Serena Williams, two to one underdog tonight. Yeah. yeah. I'm still watching though. That's I'm my watching girl. for sure. Yeah, I, I think I am going to tap in tonight. Love, love me some Serena. I just, I like the U.S. Open. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I New York. Yeah, like it's and it's cool. The fans really get into it and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I do. I don't understand it, but you know, I I, I do. I like it. Uh, wrapping up some stuff here on the YouTube chat thread, and we're we're talking about you know the the hard knocks last night. I think uh, it's been kind of panned around the city, at least from what. What I've heard, and uh, Pistons fan eleven brings up a good point. The shows, and I'm paraphrasing his comments here. The show has always been about the third and the fourth string cuts, and and I think we've lost sight of that. Pistons fan eleven's right on with that, hundred percent on. That what what did I tell you guys? My favorite part of this is like next week is my lock in episode. Bring your playbook. That's always got me for some reason, and I don't celebrate it. I'm not Sam Flannel. Like I'm not a dick, you know, like Sam Flannel is. I'm not. I'm not going to sit there and because this is. I, I think we need a live camera on Sam Flannel next week when he's watching. Because if they put Tom Kennedy on there, where they call him and they're like, "Bring your playbook," Sam Flannel will be like Tiger on the 17th at Augusta. He'll be like, "Let's go!" You know, like <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what they're going to do? They're going to bring Tom Kennedy and say, "Bring your playbook," and then uh, they say, "Look, we announced to the media that you were cut." We were just kidding. You're still with the team, bro. Keep your playbook. We'll see you next week. You'll be the sixth receiver, Tom Kennedy. Right. Make all our dreams come true. Stop it. That's, no, that's not going to happen. We're, we're just playing. But, no, you, you, you would, though. Like, that's, that's a part you want. I don't like it like that. Uh, easy does it, says Neil is mid. 
All right, man. It's a ma- it's a matter of opinion. Uh, Go Blue says <laughs> Sam Flannel will cream his pants. <laughs> oh my! You um, stay away from him. <laughs> Jack Jack Harrington says Flannel Sam is mid. So you know they're they're we're bouncing back and forth there. It's just for me that's what that show's always been about. <laughs> is the cuts the bring your playbook because that cuts me deep because some of these guys T Foss they're never gonna get another shot. They're never going to get another hey, shot. They might be here on the Woodward Sports Network. Who knows? It, it's possible. Right. But, but and, you know what? And maybe um, cutting deeper, Hard Knocks with Alliance has just been a goody, goody, hey, everything is great episodes. Maybe you need some controversy. You, you need some tears. You need, you know, anguish. And we haven't seen any of that. Yeah. Everything's been yuck, 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 ah, guy, 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 where it's my buddy, he's my good buddy, love my coach, love my, love my wide receivers, love my quarterback. Uh, I do want to address this, Terry, because we got a couple minutes left in this segment. This is kind of a 180 here, but the people have seemed to be passionate about this. And we'll go to Sam Flannel on it as well. Mark Walston in our YouTube chat thread, and this was earlier, says, Neil, are you nuts? Grant Hill did not tap out. He tapped out of Detroit. Grant Hill tapped out of Detroit. Discuss. Grant Hill also got terrible medical advice from the Detroit Pistons. Grant Hill career could have ended here because of bad medical advice. Uh, and he got bad medical advice from the, the Orlando Magic too. But the other thing about Grant Hill here, Grant Hill was put in position by the Pistons to be the golden child. Right. And so they would come to Grant Hill and say, Grant, we want to ask your opinion on the coach, and we want to ask your opinion on the direction of the organization. So Grant Hill thought this was all. We're just talking, and this is not going to come out. Grant Hill get, got pissed because he would tell the front office something in confidence, and then two days later, it's in the newspaper. He said, this is not Duke. It's not a good organization. They misdiagnosed my foot. They hang me out to dry. I'm out of here. Peace out. So we tapped out. No, he said peace out. He S- tapped okay, out semantics. because the Pistons organization was so bad. The, Till- my, my point of the story is, is he left. He left, Terry, to where a guy like Isaiah Thomas, who came into the same, a very, even worse situation, is that fair to say? Yeah, think Grant but, Hill walked but into? four years into his career, the situation had changed. Right, because he changed it. Right. And also, when Isaiah Thomas gave advice, it stayed private. There was a difference. Isaiah Thomas was working for professionals. Grant Hill was working for buffoons. Okay, either way, though. Isaiah Thomas lifted up an entire city, an entire franchise. And because won, he was working for professionals. And won multiple NBA. Isaiah Thomas was never going to be denied, T Foss. Right. The and will Grant was Hill too strong. He was working for idiots. There's a difference. If, if, then, then demand change. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't matter because it worked out. Because you shipped him out and you got back why a multi time so, defensive so player you, of the year. You got a championship out of it. You got right. two NBA finals. Absolutely. Without Grant Hill, right. Right. And you could have had two NBA Championships is if it wasn't for Robert Ory and Big Shot Sheed. Bob. Right. So you should be happy. I am happy. The why you got that sour look on your face. I, I don't have a sour look. Well, Grant Hill look left. You, he left. In the, he looked you in the eye and said, I'm out. And he also had a fan base here who said he was soft. I don't blame him for getting the hell out of here. Okay. No one, call, no one called. No one called. Why did no one call Isaiah Thomas soft? Because he wasn't. Because he wasn't soft. And neither was Grant Hill. Did you, Grant Hill's game was to penetrate. Oh yeah. The, the lane, kick out, absorb punishment, dunk on people, hang on them. How's that soft? Then he became a good defender. Mm-hmm. That's not soft. That's the thing I disagree with the fan base. You know. Uh, they would say, oh, this guy is soft. But no, he wasn't. And plus, here's the thing. and I, When Grant Hill was at the end of his career here in Detroit, we were in the locker room, and he said, you know, people were dogging about his foot. He, he took a sock off. I want you to see this. I looked at his foot. It looked like, it looked like ground beef. 
It looked like raw ground beef that was slightly browned, like it was medium, medium rare. His foot was a mess. But you know what? Mr. Soft was still trying to play for the Pistons. Mr. Soft was still trying to play for the fans. Mr. Soft was still doing his thing. And I think that was, you know, and then they kept misdiagnosing his foot. He's like, you know what? Let me tap out. I'm out of here. And that, that's what I keep hearing people say here. Like, you know, he gave all he had here. Yeah, until he left. And Sam Flynn, I, I, I value your opinion, obviously, with the, with, the, with the Grant Hill stuff. I mean, again. And you don't value mine. No, I'm saying. I, no, you don't. Yes, I do. You're Terry, you were there. You were there. I was there, but you know everything I'm saying is bullshit. <laughs> when you did I say that? Sam Flannel, Sam, okay. to find out what exactly. Tell my brother. No, I, I said what, I want to hear Sam Flannel's opinion. T. Tell Foss. us what really It's a talk happened. show. I don't Sam know. Flannel works on the talk show, I don't so know we're anything. talking. Go ahead, brother. Tell us the truth. No, I'm going to somewhat defend Grant Hill as well because Grant Hill, I believe there are two players since Isaiah Thomas went to came to town that were capable of being a superstar on an NBA Finals winning team, and that is Isaiah Thomas and Grant Hill. Grant Hill was not surrounded with the, with the cast that Isaiah Thomas was. I am a big... But no, a, a, a. a. Whoa, when, Isaiah, really? when Isaiah showed up here, run down that roster, bruh. That is fair, yeah, but he but wasn't they winning. built a roster, dude. Uh-huh. Stop going back to the... And how did the rookie. roster get finished off? Okay, this idea, though, that Bill Lambeer wasn't there, Joe Dumars didn't get added, Dennis Rodman, Adrian Dantley, and then a guy like Mark Aguirre, that matters. You're acting like Isaiah Thomas would have won a championship if they would have given him LeBron James's roster and coaching staff when he first started. It, Isaiah Thomas is an all-time great. I love Isaiah Thomas. I think you can still make an argument... He's he would have demanded it, Sam Flannel. And he, so, he would have demanded no, 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 it no. of everybody. It ma- of everybody. You think he would have lifted that team up to win a championship? Those teal, even those teal Pistons yes. teams? I disagree. I think it matters who you have on your team. He was surrounded by a really, really good team, a tough team, a team that was coached by one of the all-time greatest coaches, Chuck Daly. And I love Isaiah Thomas, but Grant Hill did not walk into the same situation. I'm no, a nor did Hill. he demand the same things. It doesn't here, ma- well, Flannel, let me help you with one thing. Do you know who the general manager was when Isaiah Thomas played here? Oh, it was uh, Jack McCloskey. No, it was Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, I'm just saying. Let's, let's be honest. Uh, Mark, Mark Walson says he didn't tap out. It was malpractice on the Pistons to push him out in game five. What about with Isaiah in game six? One of the greatest performances in playoff history. There, there's no discussion with Isaiah about him playing. He's going out there and playing, man. And that's, that's it. And that's why he is the either the second or third best point guard of all time. You might be splitting hairs with Steph Curry after he won his fourth and his first finals MVP. But you can still make an argument that Isaiah Thomas is the second best point guard of all time. And that's a testament to him. I love Isaiah Thomas. I will never say right, Flan, I want to put you to the test. This is going to determine if I'm ever going to speak to you again. You ready? Ooh, this is about to be good. Who was the better point guard, Isaiah Thomas or John Stockton? Oh, Jesus Christ. Isaiah Thomas by – Isaiah Thomas, 50 feet of crap, okay, John so we, Stockton. We Come on. Be speaking. That's John great. Stockton's a bum. Thank you. He's a product of a pick-and-roll <laughs> system with no other option in yeah. the offense but to run the pick-and-roll with Malone. If I was running the pick-and-roll with the best low-post scorer in the history of the NBA every single play, You'd have I would numbers have that too. many assists. And guess what, guess what they did in Utah? Uh, they run some play, uh, and it, w- it didn't result in a basket. Like a Malone would have the ball, he would dribble a couple times, maybe do a head fake or something, and then he'd shoot. And they say basket by Carl Malone, assist from John Stockton. That's not a damn assist. <laughs> there was Remember? some home cooking involved, right. there no was doubt. A whole bunch. He there, made there was some a whole moves. bunch. He stopped. He looked around, checked his wife out in the crowd. And they still, John Stockton still got the assist. Yeah. Coke says if you can't go physically, that's different from tapping out. No, no. He, he tapped out on Detroit. Isaiah Thomas, when he showed up on the scene, lifted an entire city, an entire franchise. That's the difference. Isaiah Thomas was great. Great. Historically great. Hey, and Grant, Grant Hill was just really good. Hey, MF and Jester, John Stockton was a bum. He couldn't dribble with his left hand, and all he did was pass the ball to Carl Malone. All right. That's it, and that's what the system produced, yeah. man. 
Okay, I'm not going to call him a bum, <laughs> but he wasn't as good as Isaiah Thomas. Not even close. <laughs> For a limited time only, all new burgers and loaded fries are at Big Boy. It's not just a Slim Jim. It's the Big Jim. The chili cheeseburger. That's quite a tease right there. Guess what else is new? The bacon blue. How about upgrading those fries? Chili cheese fries. Baked potato fries. Spencer nacho fries, perhaps? You know the answer. No, was, uh, <laughs> yes, when no. Big, no, no. When I go to Big Boy, I upgrade to onion rings. No, I'm sorry. Well, well that, that as well. Get nacho cheese on that while you're at it. Satisfy those it. taste buds at Big Boy. Fellas, let's be honest. We like things to be easy. We like simple stuff, like sports seven days a week. We like things uncomplicated, like Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Sign in, sit down, watch your favorite team play. And before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. Hi, I'm John from Better A Mortgage, and to me, family is more than blood. That's why I'm the biggest family in Metro Detroit. If you're looking to buy a house or refinance and need a loan, come get treated better than family by me and our entire team here at Better A Mortgage. We pride ourselves on giving you better advice, better service, and a better loan experience. That's why we are Better Rate. If you're looking for a new mortgage, come get treated like family. Actually, better with Better Rate Mortgage. Visit us at mybetterrate.com or call at 248-480-4467 today. Pulling up on the second hour of the show, Big D Energy, Neil Rule, Terry Foster, D Mac, Darren McCarty will be back in tomorrow. Sam Flannel, Spencer Raxter here with you as well. And, you know, it's, uh, it always gets, um, it always gets amped up for whatever reason. Uh, Mark Walson says, mailman gave Zeke stitches with an elbow. Yeah, he did. And guess what Isaiah did? Got up, won championships. Guess what Carl Malone did? Tried to jump on the Lakers, and then the Pistons beat him there too. So, oh, yeah, oh, that was so. I love that. And then the the game that Carl uh, Malone busted up Isaiah. First of all, if you Google it, the number of stitches is incorrect. If you Google it, it, says he had between forty and fifty stitches. He had ninety stitches. He had forty internal stitches, and then fifty on the outside. He really jacked him up, and they and they said that it was like being in a fifty-five mile an hour car crash mm -hmm. with no airbags. Jesus! But in that game, he he left, went to the hospital, came back, and busted the Utah Jazz in that game. He didn't wait to bust him. He busted him that night. Oh, you mean he didn't tap out? He didn't say, oh, I'm hurt. I got to go. I'm out of here. Well, he Grant didn't say, Hill hey, Detroit, different. thanks Grant for the Hill memories. couldn't play for three years, basically. Okay. And he gave everything to this franchise. I'm going to defend him. And all I know is what happened. I, all I know is I'm going to get him on the show. I want you to be nice. And, and I'm not, a professional. And Terry. Not, be, not be rude. <laughs> it's not rude. It's just Isaiah Thomas is an all-timer. That's the moral of the story. Bam. In no the history of the NBA. No dispute. Dude's built different than most. That's it. Bam. We can move on. Okay. Uh, Detroit Lions. Uh, no top 100 players. We're not going to spend a ton of time on this. I know that this came out a couple days. We haven't had the chance to get to it yet. I know people get worked up, Spence, about this. You talked about it on the heavyweights. Mm -hmm. where, where were the people at with that? They, they were kind of in agreement that, you know, you look at that team last year, and nobody really deserved to be in the top 100. I think if Ragnow was healthy and played all season, he would have been in there for sure. But you go through that roster, and my case was the only person on that roster that could have cracked the top 100 with what they did last year was Sewell. Amani. Amani oh, yeah, Amari, yeah. You know what? He, he, he had the third best uh, quarterback rating against. He had the third most picks in the NFL. He only gave up... 2.7 receptions per game and 34.6 receiving yards per game. So, like, he had well, a great season. As usual, I'm a forward thinker, fellas. When the Lions finish this season, they will have two people, possibly three, on that top 100 list. Frank Ragnow, if he stays healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, Amon Ross St. Brown. And, and I say that because his father is going to push him to be great. And then uh, 
What about Aiden Hutchinson? Penay Sewell. Gold jacket loading, everybody. Yeah, he's going to take a, t- a little time to develop, but he could be on there too. Gold jacket loading at either position. It doesn't even matter what side tackle he plays. Is That's Aiden how Hutchinson good he is. Is golden jacket or not? I'm not prepared to rule on that right now. Ooh, but you're ready to rule on Panay Su, who's not yes, playing his position. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. He's still dominant. Okay. So there, he came. Th- see, this is another one of those guys. I think that when you go back and you look, if the fortunes of this franchise change, which I, I say they are, I think a lot of you are in agreement they will, that's going to be the guy, I think, because he changed an offensive line. Is that fair to say? Like the, like the Ragnow and the Decker and the things like that? I think the arrival of Sewell changed an entire offensive line, changed the way an offensive line is perceived, changed the running game, changed it all. I mean, I agree, oh. but you know what's going to happen eight years from now? I, I'm going to be on Big D Energy. You're going to say, hey, I'm Neil Rule for Big D Energy. Me and T. Foss have a disagreement. I say Penny Sewell makes too much money. <laughs> Release his ass. <laughs> because it's all about the finances. <laughs> T. Foss <laughs> says, hey, he's a great player. He should stay. Making too much money. You know, you, you know, you and your little... Let's save a couple, you know, nickels here and there. You're gonna save want, a couple nickels. You, you're going to want Panay Sewell released because he's going to want to get paid. What, what do you got, Sam Flano? Oh, I was just, just going to say that Penny Sewell being here, I think, took that offensive line from being a really good one that had some talented pieces, but brought in a guy who makes it an elite offensive line. Without Penny Sewell, I don't think we would be talking about this as – one of the five, possibly five best offensive lines in the NFL. And I don't know if I would be as high on DeAndre Swift as I currently am without the arrival of Penny Sewell. So what Penny Sewell is bringing is organizational, is helps out the entire offense. So I do agree with Neil. I am pretty high on Penny Sewell. And the difference between him and Aiden Hutchinson right now and why, Neil, I don't think you're ready to fit him for a gold jacket is we've actually seen Penny Sewell at the NFL level succeed, especially in the second half of last season. And as high as I am on Aiden Hutchinson, he still has not played an NFL game yet. Right. It's, it, it is Is Flannel changing? Because I thought he would come on and say, oh, Penny Sewell sucks, Neil. What are you talking <laughs> well, about? You know, he's so good you can't deny it. Well, I know. Even but, Sam Flannel can't well, legend kill Penny Sewell. Sam Flannel said Ben Wallace was no good. I didn't say that. Yes, We're not going to get on it. I just don't <laughs> think he's a Hall of Famer. He deserved his defensive players of the year. But Spence, what do you got? Well, I mean, yeah, I think it's – yeah, Penny Sewell brought a different – he brought the grit to that offensive line too. You know, everybody loves the grit Dan Campbell hat and the grit mo- – and that's what he brought. He's in the face grabbing Aaron Donald's Nick face Bosa. mask. Yeah, bossing Nick Bosa up in his <laughs> yeah. first NFL right. game. Like, it's, right, out know, of position. That's, you need offensive linemen to be ugly, to be nasty, to yeah. go out there and, and hit somebody, and that's what he does. So that's I, right. I, I love he brought that attitude. Because well, Aaron Donald, man, Aaron Donald tried to call him a bitch. Yeah. Penay Sue grabbed him by the nose and did that little <laughs> yeah. slap thing. Yeah, exactly. Said, no, I ain't, no, I ain't your bitch, hey, man. Bro, that's what I'm saying. See, <clears throat> and that's, that's what this organization <clears throat> has missed since the days of Dama Kinsula. Yes. And that's why I never understood the, the hate about Adama Kinsu and the way he played and stomping Aaron Rodgers and stuff like that. And look, I'm not saying go cost yourself games or make mistakes that, that cost you a, a loss or everything like that. But there is times where you got to stand up. And as Terry say, look, I ain't no punk, man. Yeah. Like, it, it's different around here. That, I think that's a great way to put it. Sewell's arrival to me is the one that changes the dynamic of the franchise from an attitude perspective. Mm-hmm. When you lock and look, you can say, well, the Rams went on to win the Super Bowl, and Aaron Donald guys, and that's cool, and that's fine. They're a much better team. <laughs> they are a much better team right now. Yeah. But that, I love that, though, dude. And that's not, that's not a grit thing to me. That's not a Detroit thing. That's, that's how you win. That's how you, that's how you level up. That's how you go. You get more out of yourself. You earn respect from other players. Absolutely. And you have to be good to do it because yes. otherwise you are a punk. Yeah. Like, if you're just doing it to Then you're to Corlin it, Finnegan. B- bingo. You know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> but when you do it and you've got a gold jacket loading... To quote Smokey, oh, that's different. Oh, that's different. Yeah. You know, like Smokey that's... Smokey out here thinking this shit. <laughs> yeah. First you know, of all, let me say this. The Lions needed more guys like Indomitian and Sue. Yes. I mean, we all agree on that. But Thanks. the reason people are hard on him is not just because of the stomps. It's because Indomitian and Sue tapped out on the Lions before he even signed his damn contract. Mm-hmm. He wanted out. 
What can I do to get out of here as soon as possible? That's why people tapped out of him because he tapped out on the line. See, do, do you think? <clears throat> see, I, I think it's a little bit different with Sue. Do you, I think it was literally the money. I think he would have went to whoever offered him the most money. I honestly, I honestly think that. I think it was literally just the money. He didn't want to be here. His well, sister didn't want him to be here. Which, which is fair. And that was before he signed his contract. He's going to get more money. The Lions were willing to pay him. No, they weren't. Terry, no, they yeah, weren't. They, they, no, they weren't. Not, not like, to the level Miami paid him. I, I'm out. I'm not to the level Miami paid him. Dude, why did the guy sign the contract so he could have his um, – he wanted out. And I used to be a member of the Sioux squad. I used to talk to his sister. His sister used to come and see my daughter play soccer. I used to talk to her, and she said, we out of here. I said, you don't want to be here? We out. And the stupid Lions thought that he wanted to be here. He didn't. No, I think the Miami thing was the Miami thing because there's no state income tax in Florida. Okay. He wanted out That, that was like a $13 Miami, million dollar raise, before dude. Before Miami knew who Ndamukong Sue was, he was trying to get out of here. Well, I think it might be a little of both, huh? Maybe. Both things can be true. But if you're going to dog Grant Hill for tapping out, you got to dog Ndamukong Sue. He tapped out, too. Well, I think it was just money with right? him. No, you got. I gotta wake your ass up one day. It's not just about money with him. It's always just about money. Money is very important, but he felt he was too good for Detroit. Matthew Stafford, he tap on the Detroit. Yes, he did. Okay, oh, good. Uh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> he did, but you can't hold it against him. YouTube you chat thread: The Matt Stafford tap out on Detroit. I'm just trying to get this man to be consistent. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Hey, okay. what's Mr. Kearney say? What does Mr. Kearney say, Sam? All right, Mr. Kearney would say, well, I'm going to tell you later. <laughs> Academy of Warren is currently enrolling for kindergarten through eighth grade. It features AM and PM latchkey, small classroom sizes, learning street, a futuristic media center, free breakfast and lunch, Houghton Mifflin curriculum, academic games, and K through eight athletics. Speaking of athletics, Academy of Warren features a brand new state of the art sports dome field house that has a regulation basketball court, volleyball court, and soccer field. Also can be used for seven on seven football. Enroll today at academyofwarren.net. That is academyofwarren.net. It took exploring 50 different formulas and hosting countless taste tests, but we believe Gypsy Vodka is the smoothest vodka on the market. Don't believe us? Ask the owners. We're Mike and Adam Kazanowski with High Five Spirits Distillery. We're in close to about 1,200 locations throughout Michigan. We wanted to create a brand that was geared more towards freedom, love, adventure, and at the end of the day, we really wanted to tell a story that inspired other people to take risks, follow their dreams, whatever that might be. We aren't quite sure if they consume more beer or sports. Either way, the heavyweights are here. Live on Woodward Sports, daily 5 to 7 p.m. Hey, it's Scott from the Woodward Bet Show. It's football season. You guys got to make sure you come check us out. At 4.30 at the Woodward Bet YouTube page. We talk fantasy sports. We talk sports betting. All kinds of fun stuff. So, hey, you guys got to come check it out. You also got to get over to that app store and check out OddsTrader.com. It's got live scoring, play-by-play -play updates. The best place to check all the odds of sports books right in the palm of your hand. But, hey, we don't have any football, so we're going to bet on some baseball. We got some fun coupons we got to get. Listen, I'm rolling with the Mariners today. We know the Tigers stink. Tyler Alexander has been struggling. 21 hits, 14 earned runs his last 13 innings. <laughs> We'll go with the Mariners. OddsTrader.com. Woodward Bets. Check it out. Back at it. Big D Energy. Neil Rule. Uncle Terry. Terry Foster here in just the second. house. Just a second. Let me say I want to let you know I love you like a brother. Yes. You're real cool. And I'm I not, you. I'm we not, break bread together. I, we I have drinks that. together. Yes, we did. In the, in the back alley, we had lunch Absolutely. together. Absolutely. It was very on brand. But I'm not finished with the ass yet. We're going to keep going down the alley. Um... Calvin Johnson. Did he tap no. out in Detroit? No, and I see this in the YouTube chat thread. D say Barry taps. No, they retired. They were done playing. No, they weren't. He they didn't say, get Barry, me out of here. You don't You don't think Barry Sanders could have gained 1,200 yards the year after he retired? He didn't want to play anymore. He didn't want to play for Detroit anymore. He didn't want to play for the Then why Lions didn't he go anymore. somewhere else? He didn't want to play anymore. Lions if these would. guys wanted to play, they could have just went somewhere <clears throat> else, Terry. They were done playing. No. Who am I to say? Who are you to say? Who is them. anybody else to the say? Lions when Barry Sanders retires, when he says, hey, I'm done playing, that's it. 
He didn't come back. Calvin he didn't retire and come back. Would, he didn't say trade him. me somewhere Who else. Who had his rights? The Detroit Lions right. were not willing to trade his rights. Oh, okay, okay, Terry. Like they're they're just gonna sit there and let Calvin just ride off and say, you know what? No, we're not trading you. Stop, Terry. Stop. That's a, they could have. They had an asset. Isn't their job to make the team as good as possible? Uh huh. And how if would you, you do that if Calvin you have someone Johnson that won't play for says, you, Terry? I'm not playing for your ass. Then my thought would be, okay, fine. I'll trade your ass. I'm going to get something for you. Even if it's a ninth round, right. they don't have you. But he eight, retired because he was done playing. No, he was. You know how I know? He never played again. Because the Lions kept his rights. Doofus. Terry, come on, man. Come on, Terry. If, if the Lions have your right, Calvin can't play for anybody else. He wanted to. He's even said he would have played for somebody uh -huh. else if he was given the opportunity. He didn't get that opportunity. He was done playing, Terry. He retired. Never. What? Then, then why wouldn't he go to the media and say, "Hey, I don't want to play for this organization anymore. Get me out of here." Well, he's, like he, everybody he else. Essentially, did. But you did ignored he? it. What do you mean I ignored it? Because you love the Lions so much. <laughs> okay, stop, stop, Terry Foster. Stop. I love Calvin. I love Barry. They tapped out. They didn't. They retired. Now, if they would have said, "Hey, get me out of here," then, then yeah, you did tap out. They retired, Terry. They never played again. Now you can say okay. you can say were they broken by the organization? That's a different discussion. But that's not them tapping out. They never played again, Terry. Calvin signed Calvin signed his mega deal. It, why didn't he leave then? Right. And who he bet his career. He he okay. thought Terry. He told Johnson... me this, Terry. He told us this on Woodward. He we I asked the question and he said, "Hey, I was convinced we were one player away." Eric Ebron. Those were his words, man. He said okay. we were one we, player away. I, it, he bet his career I, on it, Terry. I can't help it that Calvin Johnson is stupid and follow what the organization told him. But that's what players do. The organization says we're one no. player away. The organization says all we have to do is get Eric Ebron. Okay, I'm, I'm buying it. That doesn't mean. Terry, come on, man. If they want it out. Venom, Neil, you're wrong on this. Do research. Calvin did want to come back and play for another team, but Detroit wouldn't approve it. I mean, guys, come. then why didn't he wait till the contract was over then and then go play somewhere oh, else? when he's 36 years okay, old so what, and hasn't so why, played in five years? Right. Who so, the hell wants that? Okay, Terry, yeah. If you want to play so bad... You come out and say, I want to play, just not here. It's Detroit. That's a, that's an easy that's an uh, easy press he did conference say to have. That, but you ignored it. Oh, did I? Okay. Yes. Show me that footage. He said it. Show me that footage. It, what, you don't have to say anything at a press conference. He said that, he <laughs> Terry, said that come to the on, organization. Man. He said that to Show his us. people. <laughs> he said it to, up to Rick Ross on this one. Barry he, Sanders retired, Terry. Didn't want to play anymore. He didn't want to play for the Lions anymore. Well, then why didn't he go somewhere else? Because the Lions had his rights. Come on, Terry. Dude, okay, let me, let me, here, come here, sit on my lap again. Here's how sports work. <laughs> you get drafted by a team, you sign a contract. When you sign a contract, you're obligated to play for that team for four years or five years, whatever it is. Yes, you can pitch a bitch and say, I want out, trade me, and blah, blah. And then what do the fans do? They turn on you. And so you're ungrateful son of a bitch. We're paying you $20 million a year. You want out? An uh, athlete can't say that publicly. He can't say publicly, I want out of here. Because the backlash is too much. Now, the way it works, Calvin signed a long-term contract. He got paid some of his money. The Lions mm -hmm. wanted the money back, but they wouldn't trade him. He told them through back channels, get me out of here. Get me to another team. And they're like, nope. You're our property. Michael Barr in a YouTube chat thread. Neil just tried to hold his opinion with an Eric Ebron quote. Oh, my God. Ha, ha, ha. He said that on the network. That they, they were one player away. That's why they drafted Eric Ebron. They thought that was the player. Spence? Did he not say that? He did. We What's that one got to do away. with him? He did say that. Playing somewhere else. He fell for the fake of the Detroit Lions. <laughs> the Detroit Lions say all kinds of stuff that we're supposed to believe. Right? They every oh, we're building, we got we got a good team, we're doing it the right way, blah, blah, blah. The coaching staff is in locked up with the players and but what the what happens is the organization tells the players, 
BS and people like Calvin and Joy Bell and all these believe it. I can't help it if they're easily bamboozled. Hollywood. That's not my fault. Hollywood says Calvin said his body was too messed up to keep playing. Have you guys seen his fingers and knees and legs now? I saw his fingers. They were yes. jacked up. Absolutely. But he would have played if he if there was some he would have played for the Lions if he thought at that time there was a chance to play some meaningful games. Yeah. Do you tap out in the Lions? Uh, 100%. Okay. If you said no to that one, then we, no, we, we 100%. Don't, we're going to wrestle on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> the difference is, and look, uh, Mark says you're being a hypocrite on the definition of tapping out. When you put your career on it and you never play again, you didn't tap out. You retired, dude. What if you played for this organization, got bad medical advice, and essentially when you left, couldn't play for three or four years? Wait, where where do you get this out? from, by the way? The uh, Essentially couldn't play for three or four years. I don't know. The man's book, which I'm reading right now. He, he played a little bit, and then he had, he had okay. to shut it down. He played a little bit. He had to shut it down. That's not playing 82 games. That's not playing 75 he games. He left, man. He left. He left. He left. Because he said, get me out of the here. The organization I'm out. was bad. Calvin left because the organization is bad. Barry left no, because the organization Calvin was bad. Calvin and Barry retired and never played again. They That's the difference they, they to me. They could have played. You got, you know, we, can, we can say what we think. We can say what we think. I tell you what. If the Lions trade Calvin Johnson to the Green Bay Packers, does he retire? Now, don't look at me with that puppy dog face. Does he retire? Or does he I don't play? Know. I don't know. All right, see, that's the easy answer. No, he it's not. Played. We he don't know. Yeah, we know he would have played. If you said, and Calvin had talked to Aaron so Rodgers. Then, so then where were you? So then where were you and the rest of your media brethren then to put the heat on the Lions organization and say, why, why are you going to hurt your organization to the point where you have this asset we and did. will not move it? Where we were did. you guys? Where we were you? Did. Terry? Read the paper. The paper? What's that? Well, you know what it is. Read the internet. <laughs> it's still the paper. Read it. What's that? Don't get smug on me, man. If you read, you would have seen that. Now, was it splashed across front page headlines? No, but within the oh, nuggets, okay. it was in there. Scott Klingler, Neil, you don't understand. They had the lion. They had the rights. The lions owned them. Scott, you again. You can manipulate your way out of any situation, man, especially when you're the athlete, when you have the talent, because you have the leverage. Scott, you're a brilliant man. In <laughs> fact, Scott, why don't you take this seat next week and we can scoot Neil uh, somewhere. Right. Uh, Ader Holiday says Barry, Barry could have kept playing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he could have, but he didn't want to because he retired. He didn't want to because he knew the organization was so awful. They, they, he they never dicked, played again, Terry. They he, that's boy, retiring. Kevin Glover. Uh, they, they, they did Chris Spielman. Uh, a bunch of people. And Barry's like, you know, I'm peace out. No, he said, I'm retiring. Reluctant. That's not, that's not tapping out. Yes, it is. And you could have played. Barry, you know, like, you can't. You could never say Barry tapped like a, a league MVP and arguably the greatest running back to ever play. There's nothing. There's nothing more he can do, Terry. He gave everything he had, Brother, man. He gave everything he if had. If he had played for any other organization, Calvin he would have gave everything he had. Th- he was still. He would have. He probably Calvin would probably still playing today at, at age 45. <laughs> I don't know, Terry. Like, again, <laughs> you see that man physically. You know, there's he's, some there's some mileage there's on some Calvin. Mileage on him, but he's a big man. No, he is no doubt. It's just where uh, Hollywood says, did Andrew Luck tap out? No, no, they never played again. That's the difference for me. You guys can think what you want. For me, when you never play again, you didn't tap out. You retired. So Grant Hill had retired, he wouldn't have tapped out. Correct. I don't know about you, man. You're a cute kid, but no, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. If, if the injury was so bad, you know what I'm saying? But no, like, he wanted out. He wanted out of here, dude. How can you be so logical and illogical at the same time? I just don't <laughs> because, get that. Again, because I'm spoiled by Isaiah Thomas, man. Do you, do you think Isaiah Thomas would have won a championship wherever he went? I'm convinced of that. 
convinced if the Dallas Mavericks would have picked Isaiah instead of instead of Mark Aguirre, he would have won a championship in Dallas. He would have. That's my, that's the difference to me. And that's always going to be the difference. He to brought me. Dennis Rodman here. See, there you go. Him and Mark Aguirre did. It. That's the difference to me. Isaiah Thomas would have won a championship wherever he got drafted. Hmm. Well, you're talking about one of the all-time greats. Although, you know, his greatness with the young people keeps diminishing because they are young people, and I don't fault them for that. They're still cute kids, but. (laughs) Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Hey, Planet Fitness. We are live in the Planet Fitness studios. As you see right there, it's home of the judgment-free zone where you can work out in a non-intimidating, judgment-free atmosphere. Membership starts at just 10 bucks a month for access to your home club. You can get access to over 2,000 Planet Fitnesses with unlimited guest privileges around the world with a black card membership. That's just $24.99 per month. Yes, less than $1 per day. Get all the amenities, unlimited tanning, hydro massage, massage chairs, etc. Join today in club. You're going to pass a couple on the way home from work today. Pull in the parking lot there. Join there. Really motivated? Jump on the computer right now. Planetfitness.com. Because Planet Fitness is where your fitness is essential. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. When you need apparel, there's only one place to go. Big Frog in Novi. With no setup fees, no artwork fees, no minimum, and a 24-hour turnaround, you can have your whole team outfitted in no time. Embroidery, direct-to-garment, vinyl, and screen printing, Big Frog has it all in all the styles you want. So whether it's a sports team, fundraiser, school event, or corporate needs, Big Frog is your one-stop destination. School event or corporate needs, Big Frog is your one-stop destination. Visit bigfrog.com slash novi or call 844-4-BIGFROG. At Alta, uptime matters. Uptime. Alta Equipment has everything you need to get the job done. Have a big project coming up? Alta Rent has you covered. Call them today at 844-GO-TO-ALTA. That is 844-GO-TO-ALTA. Back at it, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Terry Foster, DMAC, Darren McCarty. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll have the full squad in here. We have Sam Flannel. We have Spencer Raxter as well. Happy to have you all with us. Remember, subscribe on YouTube. You can jump in that YouTube chat thread, get your thoughts out there. And we read a lot of them, and uh, that's the way that we roll here on Big D Energy. Now, you get getting salty in that right now. What do you mean? This is not the sweet little meal that I know. This hi everybody, I'm Neil Wu. I love you. What's going on, guys? How you doing? <laughs> hey, you everybody. All salty. A guy just said Grant Hill is one of the greatest players of all time in Detroit. Yeah, which and is which is false. Off. That's true. Terry, come on, man. Is he in the Basketball Hall of Fame? Yes, he is. Okay, that means he's one of the greatest NBA players of all time. With the six seasons he played here? Is he a top 10 Piston player? Top 10 Piston? Four All-Star games in six seasons? Five All-Star games in six seasons. Are you turning your nose up at that? I mean, is he better than Isaiah? Okay. Is he better? Let's let's, let's work backwards. Is he better than Isaiah? No. Is he better than Joe Dumars? Yes. No, come on, Terry. Stop, Terry. Come on. From, uh, Terry's putting on for the camera now, I mean, everybody. From, no, from like a basketball like standpoint, like yeah, he's he's probably more gifted than That's not the question. Joe Dumars did more for Detroit for the Pistons. But Grant Hill is a better player. No. Well He's a more skilled player. Yeah, like total pack if you want to say like he's a better total package player. Yeah. Okay, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that like total package. But Joe Dumars, again, I put everything you did for the Pistons under the one umbrella. Yeah. You won two chips as a player. 
you're a top 75 player, you're a Hall of Fame. All those other things that you apply to Grant Hill, Joe Dumars also did. And oh, by the way, also won a, you know, took us from teal uniforms to a championship. I'm going to go to Sam Flannel, (laughs) our NBA expert. (laughs) Who's better, Grant Hill or Ben Wallace? Oh, Grant Hill, for sure. Oh, now. Is Ben Wallace one of the best players in NBA in Piston history? Neil? Yes. Okay. But Flano here, who I respect now, said that Grant Hill is better than him. YouTube so, YouTube chat pull up. Better Piston, Grant Hill or Ben Wallace? Let's, that's, that's a good pull. Taking it to the streets because I want to see. I, all right, people, put your money where your mouth is. It's going to be Ben Wallace. Put your money where your mouth is. Dave Bing? Hall Dave of Famer Bing was a Hall of Famer, very good player, great Piston. Mm-hmm. I said I would say did more for the Pistons organization than Grant Hill did. He did. So Dave Bing, and he became Detroit's mayor. There you have that. For you what it's worth, I give the I give the nod to Grant Hill on that one, but it's close. Dave okay. Bing was kind but of a bad the, mayor. But the person though. said he's one of the greatest <laughs> of all time. He didn't say he's better than. Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, and Dave Bing. We got it right on the chat poll right now. Who is a better Piston? Grant Hill, Ben Wallace, yeah. or Kevin Knox? You know, we, I think context is important. Yeah, Kevin for sure. Knox. Kevin Knox got a vote. <laughs> he got really? a vote. Yeah. So that's that's what it is. Yeah, people saying Ben Wallace because he won a title. That matters. Grant Hill, uh, how many and, titles and, he how many and, titles and he I racked for being that. such a great player? How many titles he he won? Because he didn't have the organization to back him. Oh. Ben Wallace did. So he needed every he needed to be downwind. He needed the wind at his so back. You're ben saying. Wallace. Ben Wallace absolutely did. Ben he Wallace had Chauncey had a, Billups. A BS Rip. team around him, he wouldn't have won a championship absolutely here. Absolutely. In not. fact, Ben Wallace needed Rashid Wallace to win a title. And Rib and Chauncey and Tayshaun. What did we say about the Pistons? Good team, really good team. But they don't they need that other that extra piece. They got Rashid Wallace and they said that's the reason, and I believe this, that's the reason that team became, became a title contender, because of Rasheed. I mean, he... So Ben <laughs> needed help, too. Ben got the help. Grant didn't get the help. So he, need, he, so he needs everything to be... the Again, he needs a win at his so back. So did Ben Wallace, who you call one of the greatest Pistons of all time? Uh, yes, because he is. Because he had Rasheed. If that team doesn't have Rasheed Wallace, oh, do, they, man. do they win a title? Man, poor Grant Hill. <laughs> Probably no, not. no, no. I'm asking you a question. See, here's what you do. Poor Grant Hill, man. When you know the answer, you pretend not to know the answer, and that's you know that's a cute little tactic. That's what politicians do. Poor Grant Hill, that's man. What you do. Just right. could never catch a break. All right, here we go. If the Pistons did not trade Man. for Rasheed was, Wallace. Was, was with the Pistons oh, that, during the teal the uniform era. Right. And poor Grant I'm Hill. I'm going to ask you this question today, tomorrow, and Every day. Friday. You got, let me finish. Is Would the 2004 Pistons have won that title if they didn't trade for Rasheed Wallace? Probably not. Argu- <laughs> you can make the case no. Yeah. No. You no, can make the no case. No argument. Be a man and tell me yes or no. But sure, Terry. What do you what do you want? You want me to say no? No, no, they wouldn't have. No possible way. No possible Bam. way. Bam. By the way, who I made agree. who made that trade? By the way, Joe Dumars. Oh, that's right. I'd say he was a better piston than Grand Hill was. Well, what he did as a uh, GM has nothing to do with what he did as a player. I, I think it's service to the Pistons organization, Terry. I think that cuts a little more ice with me than tapping out and asking to be traded. Well, it doesn't with me. Okay. So there. So that's all right there. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, Gary Cesaro says, quote, cute little tactic. That's classy Terry. Classic Terry. Well, uh, he Lu- is cute. No, Lu- Neil is a cute guy. Here's what Neil does. Neil, uh, he's got the opinions, and he can run a show. Bam, bam, bam. And then a lot of times, if you disagree with Neil, Neil will say, oh, no, this is, you know, this is my opinion. But then when you trap his ass, he's like, oh, either I can't hear you, or I don't know, or maybe, probably, sort of. No. But usually, Neil is like, this table is black, this paper is white. But there's other circumstances where you trap his ass, he's like, uh, I don't, is this paper? Is this a table? I don't know. That's a cute little tactic. And you know what? You do it very well. Thank you. I'm actually 
I'm just paying you a compliment. <laughs> uh, Sapper18 says Kelly Trapuca was a better piston than Grant Hill. Stop it. Kelly Trapuca couldn't play a lick of defense. Kelly Trapuca was pretty good, though, man. He was, I, he was good. He, he's good. He's good. I like Tr- Kelly Trapuca's game. <laughs> but you would score 30 on Kelly Trapuca. <laughs> but he'd score th- he'd score 38, so he would win the matchup, Terry. Man, Ana- he's analytics. Supposed, he's supposed to be a plus 50 against you. <laughs> Uh, let me see here what else we got on the YouTube chat thread. Um, Lewis M. Uh, and it just rolled past me on there. Oh, here it is. Lewis M. If Kevin Knox doesn't get 100% of the votes in this poll, is pointless. Facts. <laughs> He's got 4% right He's now. He's got 4%. Easy made a good point that chat polls are held suspect after the chat had the Lions going 15 and 2 this year. We, we do very. Look, when we establish these YouTube chat polls, sometimes we do them tongue in cheek. Yeah. Sometimes we do them like, like, this is a legit one here. There was no spike in the punch or anything like that. I wanted the temperature of the room. 68% of you say Ben Wallace was a better piston than Grant Hill. There's another one. Well, maybe he's a better piston, but was he a better player? No. What do you mean? Who was the better player? You Depends play, on your flavor, Terry. You play, was a four-time let, defensive we, player we of the year. We got a pickup game of basketball. And the third pick is Grant Hill. Okay, ben Terry. Wallace. Who you picking? If, if you take Grant Hill off that team, or if you take Ben Wallace off that team and put Grant Hill on it, are they a championship team? With Sheed? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. Sheed was the key, even though he screwed it up against Robert Orr, he was the key ingredient to that team. And yes, they needed Ben Wallace's so defense. You, so you, could, you just dismiss a four time NBA defensive player? No, I don't dismiss him at all. No, it I sounds like a you great do. Player. But I still say Rasheed Wallace was the key piece of that team. They needed him to win a championship. And they needed Ben, too. And Chauncey and... Sounds like you're really being dismissive. That's all I'm saying, Terry. In my mind, I'm not. Maybe to you, (laughs) I am. (laughs) Can we still drink bourbon together? If we don't, then uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> well, people are saying people are saying in the YouTube chat thread you know uh, what? that we're going to end I, up fighting, am, which we're I, not. I am going to – not only can we have bourbon together, but I'm going to give you this real good stuff to that. I'm not going to give you the cheap shit. <laughs> I'm not going to give you Bob's bourbon. Now, we're not going to go out and have Bob's bourbon. Uh, I got this bottle of single barrel, which I think you'd appreciate. Oh, yeah. Tastes like ice cream, man. I'm a big single barrel really bourbon guy. Good. Oh, and I... it's local. <clears throat> okay. I'm a good, yeah. Was that Valentine? Valentine's vodka. No, that Mayor Pingree? Did... No. Valentine makes bourbon too. Mayor Pingree is strong. Stick and I will cr- cr- crush that. that stuff together, vodka. man. Yeah, we, we stick and I uh, crush that. So, you know, that's that's my point. You just you start working your way down the list. Look, when we come back, there there was something I did want to get to though, as far as the Pistons, and I am curious to get your take on it, T. Foss, okay. because I, I the longer it goes, the more I think that Troy Weaver's up to something. I honestly believe that, oh, bro. He's always up to something. He he's mm-hmm. got something cooking. I think mm-hmm. so. We'll, we'll discuss that after I tell you about Gypsy Vodka and the Mulligan. Right? They are one in the same. The Mulligan made by Gypsy Vodka. It's eight percent. Tread lightly. That's all I'm going to say. But people have talked about it in our YouTube chat thread. We get messages on social media. People like the Mulligan, man. They're drinking this stuff. You can get it at, Total, at a Total Wine store near you. Ask for it if you're, next time you're out on the golf course. You can do it that way as well. And remember, at the heart of it all, a local company out of Petoskey, the fine folks at Gypsy Vodka. If you're rolling through the store, ask for the Gypsy Vodka by name as well. It's Gypsy Vodka. As always, drink responsibly. Life is full of hard choices. We're here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. 
ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> For a limited time only, all new burgers and loaded fries at Big Boy. It's not a Slim Jim, it's THE Big Jim. The chili cheese is such a tease. Guess what else is new? The bacon blue! How about upgrading those fries? Chili cheese fries, baked potato fries, nacho fries, what will it be? Satisfy those taste buds at Big Boy. Neil Rule here for Chili Peppers Tanning. We can join the Pepper Club at Chili Peppers Tanning. Get access to all the best deals. They'll beat the competitors' prices by at least $5. You can take a look at all the unlimited tanning options as well. Chili Peppers Tanning has the hottest bulbs, the hottest deals, and the darkest tans at Chili Peppers Tanning. Go to ChiliPeppersTanning.com. Find out which one of the 26 Metro Detroit locations work best for you. It's Chili Peppers Tanning. Chili Peppers Tan. Chili Peppers Tanning. Me. Absolutely. Neil Rule, T. Foss, Terry Foster, back with you. D-Mac will be back tomorrow. Sam Flannel, Spencer Raxter as well. And look, I'm surprised how much mileage we got out of basketball here today in and around all this Lions madness that's going on as they get ready for the season. Next week, we'll start busting out the NFL previews as well. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. We're finally here. Tomorrow, I have a get right special for you. Now, 17 and 7, documented. Oh, documented. God, we got to go through this again. Now, brother, we have a, is it conundrum this weekend? Um, like, in this state, you never root for Ohio State, right? Mm -hmm. In this state, you never root for Notre Dame. They're playing each other. And we can't ask the question, who, who are you rooting for? Because you don't root for either, but... I think question, it's easy. Who would you rather see lose? Yeah, I think I think that's easy. If I'm a Michigan fan, I want Notre Dame to lose because I want Ohio State undefeated when when they lock up with Michigan. If I'm a Michigan fan, I want Ohio State undefeated. I want to see the tears. But everybody's not a Michigan I, fan. I know, I know. But I'm saying that's that's my if I were a Michigan fan, that's how I would be with that. What um, if you were a Neil Rule? Uh, I would rather I would rather see Ohio State win too. I think I would rather see Ohio State win and, and beat Notre Dame, number one. And look, I've always said this. I haven't been, and I need to go to a Notre Dame game. Out, out of respect for college football, I enjoy college football. I love it. I need to go to a Notre Dame game. I'd like to go see like Notre Dame USC or something like that. You know, it's, is it nostalgic? Sure. But I, I feel like that's somewhere I should be, being the college football fan that I you am. You should. And not only that, but you should walk the campus and go to one of the little pep rallies. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go tailgate. No, 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 no. Enjoy <laughs> the whole thing. Tailgate. Go to the pep rallies. It's different. But do you have to go to the pep rally the night before or the afternoon before? No, I'm just I'm going. But I to tailgate. I um when I was in high school, I was hosted by a Notre Dame football player cuz they were trying to get more inner city kids to go to Notre Dame. I was uh hosted by a running back named uh what was it? Vegas Ferguson. Um, and I got to go through the whole thing about I ate with the team and um, went to the game. It was it's magical. It's 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 really different. No, I do I do need to check it out. I feel as though I owe that to to college football. Yeah, and you know what, Neil, you don't have to take your private helicopter. You could drive there. That's I don't know. Maybe in a self driving car, if that, you know. Maybe we get saying, Sam Flannel to drive. Option. Yeah, maybe we get Sam Flannel to drive or something. No, but Terry, you know, again, I'm surprised the mileage we got out, out of basketball today. And I wanted to pose this question to you because I got a very good buddy of mine that's a huge, I mean, deep, deep NBA and Pistons fan. And we text often. Okay, you and Detroit Kool-Aid are cool. That's, that's I, right. dude, I am cool with Detroit Kool-Aid, as a matter of fact. Um, but he, he texted me, this was two days ago. And brought up a great point. And it's something I thought about at first, but then I didn't really pay attention again. I think Troy Weaver's up to something, Terry. And here's why. Every minute that Kemba Walker stays on this roster, to me it becomes more about the cap slot, right? And I know you hate money, and I know you ignore the fact that it plays a part in today's sports, but it does, Terry, especially in your NBA, a league that you covered for many years. You're in a 30-for-30, 30 30, for Christ's sake. 
<laughs> Kemba Walker, every minute he's on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even hold that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you don't guys talk quit? about money. Stop it. Yeah, can you guys quit dicking around for 30 seconds? Please. No, but Terry, every second he's on the roster, and I've talked about this from many angles, if the Pistons are going to get a quote-unquote star or a sub-star or a high-level NBA all-star, it's going to come through the trade more than likely, right? Yes. Okay. As the longer he stays and you see Kemba Walker with that $9 million cap slot and Nerlens Noel with that $9.2 million cap slot, even Kelly Olnick at that almost $13 million cap, I got a feeling he's up to something, T. Foss. It could be, but maybe he realizes he needs a three-guard rotation. And maybe he's saying Killian Hayes can't cut the mustard and he needs another option just in case and Kimber Walker you know yes he's long in the tooth but he's performed in this league and we don't know what else he's he's got left in him maybe he's he needs to keep him around because he needs that fourth option to make sure that he has a good solid three guard rotation yeah but I mean at, at 32 is, is Kemba interested in being a teacher? Is, Ke- is Kemba Walker at this point of his career? Did I say teacher? Who, I said player. Right, Terry. But what do, you, what do you think Kemba Walker wants to do right now? I, and we don't know. We can't speak for him. If it were me in that situation, I know what I want to do. I want, I, I'm running out of time, man. I'm running out of time. So I got I to gotta go get it now. And when I say get it, I mean I'm t- I want a championship, and I want to go. I want to go get it now. I believe in a reserve role. I could, that's something that I could do. Right. So he doesn't want to do it here. So in other words, he's, Kimball Walker's going to tap out. He's going to tap on, out on Detroit. On Detroit. Okay, Absolutely, go. he's going to. <laughs> he will tap out on Detroit. No, it's just I, I just I get that feeling too, man. That Troy Weaver's up to something. There, there's somebody he's got an eye on, somebody that he thinks will will be available or could become available. I don't know, and, and I don't have any intel or anything like that. It's just again, I know you hate it, but when you follow the money and you see what's sitting on the roster right now, and think about this, Spence, because you and I talked about this with the NBA draft, what he did with leveraging the cap space he had with the Knicks, yeah, and basically taking on salary to get a first-round pick. What he did with that shows you that he'll go deeper than maybe most would. For sure. And he'll sit on these slots until the opportunity presents itself. Now, he may have to let the season play out to some degree. But, Spence, are you with me here? Am I cra- Do I sound crazy? No, I, I understand what you're coming from. Like, there's... This Kemba Walker shouldn't see any playing time on this Pistons roster this year. Like with with the young guards we have, with the tell guys that to trying, Terry Foster. With the guy, tell him the why. Because the young guys they're trying to produce, they need the they need the hands on experience. Like you need Kate in there all the time. You need Ivy in there all the time. You want to see Killian in there to see if he can improve anymore. So I think yeah, you're right. Kemba Walker is he's here. He is budding as a trade piece. Well, I think they had him here to like try to be a part of a three-team deal, whether that was for you know Donovan Mitchell, which could still be moved, or if Kevin Durant would have got moved, they could get their hands in the pot a little bit and try to get somebody to move Kemba Walker. But it hasn't happened yet, so we'll see what's going on with... Uh, We'll see, go, we'll see what's going on with Kemba Walker, but they definitely need to move on from him pretty soon. That very well could be. Bravo. Like a man. Thank you, you Terry. That could be. But also, T. Foss, what's your Bunyan saying? The Bunyan is saying that <laughs> he's going to trade Kimball Walker at some point. He'll find somebody desperate who needs him. So that's what the Bunyan is saying. Don't know what's going to happen, but you know, the thing I like about Troy Weaver, and I love Jack McCloskey, who was the GM here. Love Dumars as a GM here. But Troy Weaver is playing chess and the Piston Championship teams before they were playing checkers. They would just move pieces here and there and whatever came about, that's what they would do. But Troy Weaver seems to me, whenever he makes this move, 
he's thinking about the one down here. Right. And this is probably why he's got Kimmel Walker. I mean, yeah, and you had to take on, right? It was a perfect storm because who do you steal on in the NBA? The Knicks, right? Like, mm-hmm. that's, that's proven. Sure. And the Knicks, and they're like, their insatiable appetite to be mid because that's, that's right. what the Knicks, <clears throat> the Knicks live in that space. Yeah, I mean, that, no, that, that's Knicks, what the Knicks are. You don't take advantage of them. You bitch slap them. Yeah, that's what I'm that's saying. The difference, yeah. yeah. You know, steal on them. Right. Bottom line, you know, I got about $200. That's what, that's what you tell the Knicks. With all apologies to Debo. And I just think that he saw the mark in the room at the poker table and took advantage of him and said, thank you, I'll use this to get what I want here. And it's inconsequential to me because they, cause the Knicks can't stand it. Like the Jalen Brunson thing. And they, they, can't, they can't stand it, man. They can't just sit by and say, hey, here's, here's the path. Here's what we're going to do. They can't take it. And he, know, and he knew that. He used their emotion against them. And I just, again, I don't know what the name is. I, I don't know like how, how you break it down and, and who that person will be per se. I just got the feeling that Troy Weaver's up to something. Maybe he's going to get Bronny. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. YouTube chat thread. Who's a better point guard, John Stockton or Will Bynum? I'll, I'll just cast my vote for Bynumite. No, no, no. Will not, the not, thrill. Let's not get silly. Will the thrill. <laughs> it's easy in the YouTube chat thread. Mid-York Knicks. That, I like that right there. Two. Stockton was better than Will Bynum, okay? Mark Just, Walston and I were in agreement on this. Mateen Cleaves was better than John Stockton. Stop it. Come on, guys. Stop but, it. Rodney Stuckey, better, oh, better, God. Than, <laughs> better than John Stockton. Yeah. Go through the list. Yeah. Go through the list. Yeah. Rodney Magruder, better Rodney than John Magruder, Stockton. better than John Stockton. Walter Sharp, better, better than, than John, John Stockton, Stockton. For sure. Gigi Detomi. Way better. Way what about better. Mike Williams? Mike Williams. Or do you even know who Mike Williams is? Big Mike Williams? I don't know who he is, but I know guy. he's better than John Stockton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, me, let me tell you guys about the sports marketing agency. They help spread awareness about mental health, substance abuse as well. Their podcast is called This is the F Word. It's a series on fentanyl. And let's be real, the other addictions that are plaguing our communities today. If you're struggling, go to thesportsma.com. Here's a play for you, too. If you know somebody that's struggling, go to thesportsma.com because the Sports Marketing Agency, they're here to help. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. <laughs> Scream when you exhale. <laughs> yeah! Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. We aren't quite sure if they consume more beer or sports. Either way, the heavyweights are here. Live on Woodward Sports, daily 5 to 7 p.m. Detroit's downtown summer playground is back. Open all summer long, the Monroe Street Midway. Enjoy roller skating, free Wi-Fi, food trucks, art installations, and so much more. Don't forget to take advantage of the basketball court, putt-putt, and, of course, family programming all summer long. All art installations are done by Detroit artists, and it's a fun, safe event from people 1 to 100. Go to deckedoutdetroit.com. What's going on, everybody? It's Spencer for the Fulling Warehouse in Hamtramck. You know it. You've heard of it. It's the home of the original football bowling pin game called Fulling. Multiple different ways you can play. They've got $12 open unlimited play. We can stay there open until close. Have a good time. They also have private lane reservation, $120, 10 to 12 people. You get your own lane. You can bring in any type of food you want if you get thirsty. They have a $2 mystery beer vending machine. You pop in $2, pops out a good beer. No hassle, no fuss needed. If you know what you want or you want to make a decision, there are multiple fully loaded bars for you to choose from. So make sure you go down and check them out in Hamtramck in person or visit them online at FullingWarehouse.com. Again, that is FullingWarehouse.com. Final segment of the show, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Terry Foster here in the house and uh, happy to have Terry here going forward on Big D Energy. D-Mac, Darren McCarty will be back tomorrow and he's here now, first time in studio, Ask T-Fall. 
Anything you got for Terry Foster. He'll answer anything. I'm not afraid. He's not. He ain't scared, as, as they would scared. say. Uh, Dr. Dirty D, Jackie Moon, greater than John Stockton. Anthony Bennett uh, from Woodward Sports, <laughs> greater than John Stockton. <laughs> I'm with that. Honestly, though, this is a real opinion. Like, look, a couple of those are trolls. Rajon Rondo is a better point guard than John Stockton. All right, let me step in and say John Stockton was a very fine point guard. Y'all stop it. <laughs> Kevin in Muskegon, my left nut, better than John Stockton. <laughs> I mean, that's an opinion, obviously. But ask T. Foss in the YouTube channel. Ask t- his yeah. wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, any question you got for terry foster and you know again he'll answer anything and, and i'll cut everybody I'll, I'll cut everybody off well let's get to this one clomp sauce terry which championship run was the best to cover uh i would say the best to cover the most fun i would say the 97 red wings was more fun uh because I didn't think there were any personalities on the team. I got surprised there were, and it was kind of fun, and there was a lot of dynamics. So I, I enjoyed that championship run before because people were at that time were doubt they doubted that team more than any other, and maybe the the bad boy Pistons they doubted them in uh, 1998, but they said the Russian Five didn't care about a Stanley Cup uh, at the time. Steve Eisen was still finding his way as a um, as a captain. Uh, Chris Osgood, well, he didn't wasn't the goalie, but he wasn't good enough as a goalie. Mike Vernon wasn't good enough as a goalie, so they would doubt it. But um, they came through. That was fun. It was for those. Those were great times. I, we, D Mac and I talked about that when the Red Wings were like officially eliminated from playoff contention, and I was like, man, do you remember when how electric a game the Red Wings game day would be in the city? Like in the, right. in the playoffs. But on the flip, if the wings were down like 2-1 to one in the third period at home, you could cut to the tension with a knife. Oh, yeah. All the jokes <laughs> are like, oh, my God, what's going on here? They should be yeah. killing this team. I know, yeah. I, I always said, I'm going to ask DMAC this because I don't think I ever asked him this on the air. Was it easier? I, I bet it was easier playing on the road at times because of what you said. If they, if they were down 2-1 to the Phoenix Coyotes – People be like, "What the hell is going on? This is gonna be the San Jose Sharks again." Right. Like, that—that's exactly. Now, when they when they came home, they they did this. They, they got all tight collar and everything, and they tried to play too perfectly, and it hurt them sometimes. On the road, they're like, "Okay, we just out here kick somebody's ass. That's it," and they <laughs> right. do it. Right, absolutely. Uh, Mark Walston asked Terry Foster, "Who should be the next Pistons coach?" Well, good question, and I've actually thought about that, but not hard enough. Um, there needs to be a guy that's going to carry them to the next level. Uh, I like young guys. I'll tell you what. Can I answer that tomorrow? What sure, you, think you can. That? Okay. Because for me, it's it's Dwayne Casey. <clears throat> that's not the next. That's right. the current. Well, he's you know, if all goes according to plan, he's not going to be the coach. Right. Lo- like long term. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, but he's not going to be the coach. Right, but, but I, li- I like where he is with the young guys. I do. And he's very respected. He is. Treats everybody well. He does. So, you he's know. a very fine coach, but very, very fine he man. will not be the coach when they win a cha- if they win a championship. Squishay won. Ask TFOS. My chef and I debate this a lot. Ribeye or New York Strip? Ribeye. Yes, sir. No yes, doubt. Yes, sir. When I was younger and a little bit dumb... I would have told you New York Strip, but then I couldn't afford the ribeye at the time. Now that I hang out with people like Neil Rule, I have to up my game, and I've had ribeye and ribeye. Yes, no question. Uh, Chef Chris Smith, it's not a question for you. It's just a statement. Terry Foster is the Sun Bowl MVP. I did. I had fun at the Sun Bowl, and I'll never forget it. Elijah wants to know, ask Terry, was there ever a moment that Zeke thought about leaving, or was it someone who you thought would end up being a Piston, but it didn't happen? Zeke never seriously thought about leaving, but he was pissed off because he thought Jack McCloskey was always trying to find the next point guard to replace him. And so whenever he would um, 
whenever the Pistons were drafting someone like Doug Overton and some guys who couldn't even play, he would get all bent out of shape. But that doesn't mean he wanted to leave. He was just pissed at the situation. Do you think he like used that as motivate, like manufacturing motivation or anything like that? Oh hell yes. Yes. In fact, um, great ones do that, man. He did that. In fact, uh, when the Pistons drafted Doug Over- Overton, who was from the South, he did the most humiliating thing I've ever seen a player do to another. He, in front of the media, he plays Doug Overton a game of one on one, and when Zeke had the ball, <laughs> he would tell him what he was going to do. I'm going to cross you over, fake left, and, and uh, drive right, finger roll. And that's what he would do. <laughs> and Doug Overton couldn't stop it. And the game got out of hand. They were playing the 15. It was something stupid like 14 to 3. And then at the end, Isaiah had the ball at the top of the key. He said, Doug, Doug, you done dug your ass a hole. <laughs> and he did a step back three point on a swish. That was the end of the game. And That's then I awesome. asked Zeke, I That's said, did you story. humiliate the guy? He said, he said, no, I told him what I was going to do. I said, yeah, you did. You did do that. <laughs> but. <laughs> but there it was. Tomorrow, we will be back at it. Good show today, guys. Good Great running show. with T. Falls. fun. Yeah, we, we certainly did. Appreciate all you guys tapping in, too, on the YouTube channel. All the messages, all the views, everything like that. Thank you all. We'll be back at it again tomorrow. Don't forget, bottom line. Or no, I'm sorry. They changed the name of the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's the M Go Blue Show. Yeah. Yeah. The it, bottom line, or er, Armani the, and Edwards with Maz. The Michigan Power Hour. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> we bleed blue. We bleed from blue. From two to four. Two to Go four. Blue. Yeah. Go Blue. Go Blue, two to four. No. Speaking of double. <laughs> yeah. For Terry Foster, for Sam Flannel, for Spencer Reiser, my name is Neil Wood. Thanks for tapping in. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Well, see you later. Bam. <laughs>